Hi, I'm Randy Livingston, head basketball coach at Isidore Newman High School. Thanks for tuning in to FanView Podcast. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back, FanView Podcast. I'm that boy, Fred. G Sports back at it. You in the building, baby. Again. And again and again. Coach ain't here, here but I got it for him. Yeah. I'm going to take it up for him. Got it for him. You got yeah. to live up to the bill for him. Absolutely. Listen, want everybody listen. Subscribe, FanView Podcast. If you on IG, FanView Podcast. If you on YouTube, it's FanView Nola. If you on Twitter, which X. Now, uh, <laughs> right. X. Right. We just missed two more X's, baby. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be X rated. <laughs> You know, but don't forget to subscribe to our family. Don't forget to follow G Sports. If you're on YouTube, if you're on Twitter, if you're on Facebook, IG, I can't help you if you're underneath the rock, baby. I just can't help you. I'm at 22.9 thousand subscribers, man. I'm trying to get to 25, 25 before 20, 24. Yeah, That's my goal, 25. Got to have a giveaway, baby. Speaking to existence. Got to have a giveaway. You're right. You're right. I'm going to have a giveaway. About I'm going to think about that. And man, we got a Louisiana legend in the building, man. Yes. Hall of New Orleans Hall of Famer. Get it right. Put some, put some respect, on, put his some respect on his name. respect on his name. Newman, Isidore Newman, head basketball coach, Randy Livingston, man. Uh, Preacher's coming on the podcast, bro. Uh, uh, since you've got into the coaching game, man, you have put your mark uh, over there at your alma mater, Newman, and, and in the state of Louisiana. Uh, two straight state championships. I know you're going for your third this year. Back to back. But we always like to start our podcast off talking about your journey, man. Uh, you know, I remember when you was in high school, I was like in – Second or third grade. Yeah. But I'm such a basketball historian. I remember, you know, seeing you on the news and, and seeing how good of a basketball player you was. And it made me a fan instantly, you know, growing up. Uh, but ABC take us back, man. News. Take us back, man. Growing up in the Calio Projects. Uh, picking Newman as, as your high school to attend and, and how you flourished. And being Madonna's All-American. Being a parade All-American, man. Going to LSU, the, the trials and your tribulations, man. Just take us back through your whole journey, man. Man, I don't know if we have enough time. <laughs> nah, we'll try to we'll try to get through it, man. Right. I appreciate you know, Fred, you guys having me and you having me on um, being on podcast today. This um, you know, I, I enjoy, you know, getting out, talking, and basically at the end of the day, you know, I started off in the Calio, just like all the young kids around here, mm -hmm. right? Um and to me, playing sports, it was just a way for me to get out of, stay out of trouble, mm -hmm. basically. You know, growing up in the Cali, you can go left or right. And, um, but at that time, when I started playing sports, I decided to, you know, go straight. You know, a lot of people that know me growing up, and we just had a lot of conversations about football. Mm -hmm. Football was my first love. I, I love playing football. Um, grew up playing at Taylor Park. Um, a lot of people don't know. I went to John Curtis. Um, hold up, hold up, yeah, hold up. I went to John hold Curtis. Up, I went. Up, I, I, I tell you, I was in John Curtis's sixth and seventh grade. We had the Biddy Basketball National Championship coached by Bill. I mean, Bill Robinson. We had the championship game against a Puerto Rican team. I don't really want to get into that. Right. Two cats had mustache and hair on their leg. <laughs> Nine and ten year old. And we lost by one point. I'm still <laughs> mad at that. I know the two guys' name. Listen, you know that's how mad I am about that. You got to be. Mad, mad to still remember something like yeah, 1990. Yeah, yeah. No I'm a, I'm a competitor here. Man, man had a stash and hair on his leg. <laughs> Miguel Davila and Alex Cruz. I know their name. I was so mad. <laughs> but I went over there. The, the, the championship was over there. Um, and then the guys at Curtis saw me play basketball. They knew I played football. But I went there. Um, football was my first love. I was a option quarterback. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody knows who Chris Howard is who went to Michigan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, we yep. ran the same fear. We used to do it at lunchtime. But, you know, if Chris was the off back, they blocked for me. I wasn't pitching. I, I like running. That was my deal. Dive and Chris would go take out somebody, be an extra blocker. But, you know, those were the good old days. Um, but, you know, I just quickly got better at basketball. Um, and um, the love for that grew. I still love basketball. I mean, football probably to this day yeah. more than basketball, but I just got better at basketball mm -hmm. so quickly. I put in a lot of work, had great coaching. Um, I mean, if you want to talk about utopian type amateur careers, I mean, we can start from I wasn't very good. Basketball, nine, ten, I started getting better, and then 11, I just took off. What was the turning point? Um, I, I think – I had coaches that I was, you know, Nard, you know, he played bitty basketball. So I right. was one of the biggest guys. I played center. 
But after we lost, and that's why it was a turn point. We lost to that Puerto Rican team. <laughs> <laughs> they, they played a box and one. But when you're the big man, you got to depend on somebody to get you the ball, oh, yep. right? And so I would run around like crazy, tire myself out. And then right after that game, I had a coach come up to me and say, hey, man, look, you're a good player right now, but if you learn how to handle the ball at a high, high level, you never have to depend on anybody to get you the ball. You can handle the ball. And the boxing one becomes null and void. And so I worked on my ball handling all summer. You know, Barry Tyler backyard, every playground, all day. Back then we didn't have no trainers. No, it was no trainers. No, it was just it's your will to yeah play. <laughs> but I had an older brother. You know, he would be there when I do ball handling. If I put my head down, he hit you in the chin, yep. pop, it up, pop it up. So you can always right. see ahead. So I was always at a younger age, one of those guys. Once I learned how to dribble and and take care of the basketball, I can see the plays two steps ahead because I'm looking ahead, right? Not you know down. So. That's where kind of that point guard instincts took over. And like I said, from a utopian AAU bitty basketball career and then into high school, I, I mean, I might have had a pinky injury or ankle injury, but we won everything. We won 12-year-old bitty basketball in Orlando, national championship AAU, MVP, 13. You played for the Spartans? Played for the Spartans, Coach Rob, MVP. We won every, every AAU national championship. Until we were 16, I think we came in third. I think we lost finally in the semifinals. And so that, you know, bolstered into going into high school. And people don't know. I mean, I have my – somebody showed me all my stats. I basically averaged 20 points and eight rebounds my freshman year, which was kind of unheard of. Yes. At the time. Yeah, At the time. And, the I was, time. and I was sharing it with Coach Fitz's son, Edmund, who wound up going to Ole Miss, was a good player too. Mm -hmm. So I can only imagine if I was playing on a team by myself freshman year, it may have been more, you know, Fast. but Fast. I, I, I get it. I know, I know what team play was all about. So you always need players. And so then we, we lost my freshman year and probably was the Newman best team we had at Newman when I was there. We had all athletes. We had another college player on the team, but we didn't win. And man, that hurt, man. I won't lie. And we lost to another good team. Kim Lewis at Varnado mm. played at Tulane. Mm -hmm. And we'd always see them in the playoffs and they got us that first year. I'll never forget the next day was Mardi Gras. I think I cried the whole parade routes because winning was important. And so right. I vowed after we lost, I saw the seniors cry and I was, I would never have that feeling again. And man, the next year, sophomore year that probably was the best season besides my senior year but from a playoff stretch I didn't play any better I mean I think in the playoffs the five games back then you had to win five games to win it I averaged like 42 14 rebounds 10 assists six blocks like that was just a five game and we played against some dudes Clarence Caesar we played Doug Anderson all those kids was good those guys was nice going to college and um but then that summer after I had that run, the Boston shootout came. Mm -hmm. And all the AU national championships, all that stuff I did, but then to go on the East Coast, I had Kerry Kittles in the backcourt. Kerry Kittles. That's the name. John Randino was on there. Dwayne Spencer. Mm -hmm. We had Scotty Thurman. We had a really, really good team. And um I showed out in the Boston shootout against Jawan Howard, Michael Finley. Um who else was on that? Pros. Team? Yeah, it was all pros. It was three other pros on that team. Um, Sherelle Ford, who lives down there now, and uh, Donnie Boyce, who played with the Hawks. So we 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 went up there and put New Orleans on the map. That was another funny. I mean, I got a lot of stories for days. We get on the elevator. The the tournament was run by Coke, Dunkin' Donuts. Those were the big sponsors. Reebok. Mm -hmm. I remember us getting pump shoes. Mm -hmm. The lady was like, "Where y'all from?" We were like, we're from New Orleans. Most of us was from New Orleans. She was like, oh, which y'all came up here just to, you know, be a tournament, get wins to everybody else. <laughs> I kind of looked at Dwayne and all of them. I was like, man, I ain't say nothing. But like, as soon as she got off the elevator, like, we kind of knew what time it was. It was like, okay, we now we got to put, no question, we're going to put New Orleans on the map. And we did. that To be on the East Coast and the Because the East Coast is like really the mecca of a basketball, one, you know, that's what everybody thinks. 100%. We played a D.C. team that had Lawrence Moten and all those guys. We played um, a team from Philadelphia that had Dante Calabria and Big Dan Fortune, ran through them, and then to play Chicago that had all those pros. Man, we, we really did put Louisiana map. And I carried that boulder from when I was younger playing AAU mm -hmm. that, you know, we could hoop. I played with guys that were all from the projects, and we won. So, like, it didn't matter who we played against. 
And it's something about that camaraderie of growing up with guys and staying together. We might have added some pieces from Baton Rouge here and there, but we won. So from that, Boston shootout, and then to win three state championships, to be named player of the year, my junior year with Jason Kidd, yeah. then my senior year with Rasheed Wallace. You know, life, life was great. Um, that, I mean, I people, I don't, because I'm sort of a, I'm a proud guy, but I'm not really a, bragging type guy I'd rather mm-hmm. let other people do it but as you get older I think it's important for not only the younger generation for Hannah there's stuff to follow but I'm only there's only a few of us Kareem Abdul-Jabbar LeBron and I think there's one other person that won co-player of the year a player of the year is two straight years in the nation and so that's something to be proud yes. of when you look back yes and from Louisiana story in the basketball man I, I i love and cherish those days that's you know it gives me bragging rights when people start talking about this that and other mm-hmm. but i'll stack my high school career and amateur career against anybody and that's including lebron kareem it doesn't matter who it is because we won everything and every time we won i was the mvp we won three state championships two years national player of the year i mean I, it doesn't get any better than that for me i'll tell you what uh I know it's going to bring back some memories. Do you remember when you came and played at Nickel State yep. against Andre Brown? No question. So, Andre Brown, you know, I'm from Homer, so yep. that's my area. And Dre Andre Brown is a legend. No question. Right? A legend. Uh, you know, a lot of people say he's the best player to ever come from my area. I would remember going to Nichols and watching that game as a kid. It's packed. <laughs> it was packed. It's packed. And I said to myself, I think I, my, I was with my uncle, and I asked my uncle, and I pointed to Rand. I'm like, Uncle Nels, is he going to the NBA? <laughs> <laughs> I was like in the third, fourth grade or something That's like crazy. that, bro. And and you you don't forget those those moments as a kid because you seen it firsthand. Like you know, I remember because I was I, I used to pick up the paper, you know, and watch the paper and look at the paper and look at the who, what was going on in high school. Yeah. I'm watching the news just for the sports section. My mama be like, "Gee." The sports section about to come on. I'm running to the front. I'm running to the front to go watch it to see, you know, I was just that kind of guy. Like, when I talk to older cats that played in your area, they be like, man, how you remember? How you know all? I'm like, bro, I'm just a I'm a historian like that. So, take me back to that, man. Like, coming to Nickel State, uh, playing against somebody like Andre Brown. I think Andre Brown went to uh, Seton Hall. Went to Seton Hall. Yeah. And, 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 and living up to the bill because everybody wanted to see yeah. what the hype was with you. Yep. And that was that was a good matchup. So Andre was one of those guys we picked up later on in AU because he could yep, ball. So yep. he came play with us in a couple of tournaments. I'll never forget. Um, and so I knew what he was about. And when we played a game, we played John Everett in the Superdome with Rashard Allen. Mm-hmm. He played Saint Aug before, so he was a featured guy. And I knew. Um, I think when I look at some of the the former NBA guys talk about rivalries and stuff, you just know when you're about to play one of those dudes, you got to show up. Yep. And so, like, you know, they're like, the because the comparison start, right? Mm-hmm. Is Andre just as good as man? He scored a lot, blah, blah, blah. For me, growing up, the way we grew up and how competitive it was in the Calio, all the park basketball, all the stuff. I mean, Pat Sertan and mm-hmm. Bell, we all talk about this. It was just competitive. So I knew I didn't have my head coach that day. Coach Fitz wasn't coaching that game. So I knew. I had to carry that group, um, all the seniors, Cooper, Justin. In an unfamiliar territory. Yeah, unfamiliar. We playing on the college campus. And, man, like I said, that was, those were just peak days. It didn't matter what Dre or Vanderbilt Catholic did that right. day. We were going to win. It yeah. was just in the cards for us to win because they played the best game, team game. And then I had to do a lot, do a lot. And I'll never forget that game. But about 30 seconds left, they were up by three or four. I just knew if we can continue to, like a lot of people will panic, shoot threes, and then it'll be over with. You got to foul and be over with. I just was drive. It could take me five seconds to get down there, three seconds, two seconds, whatever. Score two, right, to prolong the game. I think we almost got a steal, and then they got free throw. So they were up one. Two, sorry. Mm-hmm. The guy, I watched him. I, I got that game on film. I have that. I I, I transferred it from um, VHS. VHS. I had it on CD, CD, and now I have it digital. I just have it stored away for a good documentary is coming. So <laughs> so I saw the guy walking to the free throw line. I was like, man, he ain't going to make these. He missed the front end of the one and one. I think there was five seconds left. I grabbed the rebound, dribbled hard as I can, left. And I, as soon as I let it go, I knew it was good. 
It was up two. We went by one. All I remember is just running around, and when I watched the replay of the video, I see all the kids and all people in the fans go crazy. But then I see my mom run across the baseline like that. <laughs> I see my family run. I hugged them, and then, you know, I shook hands with the guy. But when the announcer at the end of the game, he pretty much said, Randy scored this amount in the first first quarter, this amount in the second quarter, this amount in the third quarter. But my first quarter was like 16. My fourth quarter was like 20. Like, I, I think out of all of the 50-some points we had, I had 51 of the 57. Right, right. And so, like, it was like one of those games. And Drake played well because he had like 28 mm-hmm. points. But mm-hmm. I know – I had to separate myself from a competitor. And Definitely. Drake was a great basketball player. But that was a great atmosphere that night for basketball. And I, I remember that game. And it's probably on my Facebook. I got a little highlight thing I did of that game. But Ooh. that was a that was one to remember. So you got a hell of a remember. Yeah, you know man. I'm telling you, I, I just remember that. But my next question is, back then, you was eligible to leave straight from high school and go to the NBA. Mm-hmm. So is that you? Why not go to the NBA? Well, that was a tough thing. Like, I think there was a – first, there was a big gap of people that declared for the NBA. Because I think Moses Malone was the last one. There was somebody – That was going there, huh? There was somebody else right after that, but it was a 15-year gap. Okay. Believe. And so what happened was I found out later, and this, you know, my head coach at the time said a couple of NBA scouts that came to some of the games, and he pretty much told them I was going to go college, right? But mm-hmm. had I known or it would have been brought up as an option – Back then, it was just such a gap. So you weren't even thinking about the NBA? No, I wasn't thinking about it because it was such a gap. It was I such a gap. I go one year, do what I do, and I'm out, right? Right. It just wasn't, it just wasn't a thought. And most of the guys that went pro were bigs, right? So guards That's a good go point. pro. That's a good but point. But then to find out Jerry Coangelo was one of those guys who came down and scouted, and they had like the six or seven pick, and he said they would have drafted me later on as I've, you know, seen him over the years. Now, hey, how did he feel, bro? It, it was tough because you got to remember the very next year the explosion came. Kevin Garnett, Kobe, Bryant. Kobe Bryant. It started. It just the wave of it started. Kobe, so Garnett went. Yes. Kobe came the next year. Yes, and then yeah. it was McGrady, the, McGrady, 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 everybody. So, so, it was like yeah. wildfire. It yep, was, it was just one of those things. And timing's everything in life, man. And I think for me, that just was an opportunity that wasn't presented, but it wasn't supposed to happen. That's I, I I look at everything like that. But, you know, if you fantasize and think about it, yeah, it would have been great. It would have been great. Because, well, you could have got drafted because I didn't get hurt. Because Jason Kidd went number two. Yeah, yeah. in that draft. No question. And, and people were saying they thought you was better than just, Jason Kidd. Yeah, at that time. At that time. Then y'all were very comparable in terms yes. of prospects, That's a, in terms of who was going to be the better point guard. That's a funny story because then we've, we've become very, very good friends. We played together in Phoenix. But, yeah, mm-hmm. when I was in high school, you can ask Rock because he was coaching the BCI team. We went looking for Jason. Them. I, <laughs> I wanted that matchup. That was like – that was just my – how right. I felt. I worked yeah, hard. Jason, went, that Jason went to a one year with Cal. Cal, yeah. The one year with Cal. And we were supposed to meet in the BCI. He was playing for L.A. Slam and Jam. And what happened was they said he had the SAT. Oh, uh, that's what I'm telling you. That was the story. So I was, I was like, man, hell with the SAT. We won't ball. Like, you ain't going to school for academics. You going to get out it. too. I ain't so, it. But that's what, that's what was said. And so that was oh, a tough time. He knew that was a bad matchup for him. But, but the craziest thing, though, is we wound up playing against each other every day in Phoenix, even though I was hurt. And then, like I said, we've become, like, very close. When I was over, he was over in Lib- uh, Slovenia watching Luca. Uh, for these friendly games, and we talked on the phone and, and talked in the arena. So, like, you know, we've become good friends. It's just amazing how those things work out. But, you know, his career was great. I feel like I was a, the same cerebral person as him, but more athletic. Right. And so that's how I felt like, you know, that matchup would have been. But I would have loved to see it because he, he was one of the best, you know, NBA point guards. Because you 6'4", yeah. with Jason Kidd 6'4", too? Yeah, about 6'3", 6'3", 6'3". Y'all kind of around the same thing. We were similar. Yeah. And, Man, that is so and strong. We both were strong, but I was way more athletic. Yep. Way so, more. So way more. You know, it's it's life works out like that. Yeah. And then funny. and then you tore your ACL yeah. the summer going into LSU, right? Yeah. So graduate. Um making that decision to LSU was weird. I always like to get into a little bit of the recruiting stuff. Man, I'll never forget it was the fall before my senior year, right before I go in there. Man, I go to mom. First of all, Duke sent Grand Hill down. He had family here. We hung out for two, three weeks. That's some of the recruiting stories. He still talks about Camille Grill to this day. Coach T. 
I'm gonna tell you, they were at the ninety. They was that was the first dream team. He was over there with that group. Uh -huh. He used to call every day from there. But my dream school was always North Carolina. In my house, my mom's house, my room is still painted Carolina blue. That was always oh, no, what I wanted to do. So could have been there with Rasheed Wallace. Yeah, that was yeah you remember Rasheed? Rasheed, Rasheed. 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 Yeah, so we talked about it. But what happened was I called um, uh, the late Dean Smith, and I was like, look. If I come to North Carolina, I'm coming all these miles from home, and I compete with Phelps. I think that was the point guard at the time. And I beat him out. You still mean to tell me I can't start if I beat him out every day? Because I, I was just I was just competitive like that. If I feel like I beat a guy out, I deserve to start. And it was like, nah, we ain't start Mike. You know what I'm saying? So, I, you know, you couldn't. Mike was Mike at that right. point. Right. So, like, I couldn't say anything to me, but in my heart of heart, if I'm going to beat a dude every day, I, I, I need to I, go I in, there, right? So, so basically, they were saying they wouldn't start in the freshman. Yeah, they wouldn't start in freshman. Because Stack and Rasheed didn't start either. They right. were behind Montrose and somebody else. Yeah. Right? So, they didn't start. And so, who, the point guard was Ed Coda back then? No. Who was it? Jeff McGinnis. Jeff McGinnis. And we all battled. So, Jeff they McGinnis. were all boys. So, me, Jeff Stack... McGinnis. And she talked about us three going there. And then when I didn't go, McGinnis went, which was fine. And then the LSU deal, so it was basically Kentucky and LSU. Because Rick Pitino was at Kentucky. And the, I went to my mom. Pitino. I went to my mom. But I'm going to tell you. But I'm going to tell you how crazy the recruiting world is. I go to my mom. She's the only person I know. It's the day before school starts. My mom, I know where I want to go. She was surprised. I said, I'm going to go to LSU. My brother was there. But he wasn't playing sports. He was just there. But I said, I'm going to go to LSU. I, I, I tell y'all, 10 minutes later, I get a call from Billy Donovan and Rick Patino. Before you go to LSU, come to Wildcat Night and come see Wildcat Lair and you'll change your mind. Now, I'm like, the house bug, phone bug, mom ain't call them. Right. How did they know? This is way understand. This way back, yeah. This is not a cell phone. Ninety three, yeah. Right. This is not a social phone. media yeah. era. Right. None of that. They get this information. It was the craziest stuff. I'm talking about less than ten minutes later they called and said, Randy, before you commit to LSU. Now they didn't even know. Right. And so I tell Coach Fitz the next day, and he was like, Sleep on it for a week, and if you still feel like that, go. We came, I had my press conference, and I was off to LSU. And one of the things so you didn't even take the visit? No, so I had already took unofficial visits to North Carolina and Duke twice. I had been up there. Michigan was in the top five, and they had the Fab Five, and one right. was going. So, uh, cold. There's no way I was going in the cold. So, it became, you know, SEC. So, I'm like, if I'm going to I'm gonna go to the SEC, there's no I'm way I'm going to leave home. to go to Kentucky. And so, and at that time. That's, Del, when, Tony, that's when Tony Delk. Yeah, Ryan all of them was there, and, and Antoine Walker, all of them was there. So, but what happened was, I like Johnny Jones. I had a great relationship with him. He had been knowing me since I met Johnny on a recruiting visit when he was recruiting Dave Johnson, who wound up going to Syracuse. He played for the Spartans, uh -huh. and um, so I knew him since I was 12 years old. Had a great relationship with him. Never talked to Coach Brown throughout the whole recruiting to the end. What? Johnny was my dude. I mean, I talked to Johnny. Well, you're a parade all America. How, how the head coach never talked to you? Johnny was my dude. It'd be like Frank and how they recruit. That's how great a recruiting they was. Johnny was one of the best. We talked all day, every day. And um, at the end, I told Coach Brown. He was the one I called. I actually, I told Johnny first, and then I hear him and Coach Brown, them screaming in the background, and then I talked to Coach Brown. That's how my recruiting went. And um, one of the things that drew me to him is, like, between – he got a bad rap of, but you know, he wasn't a great X and O guy. Mm. But he always took care of the players. When they lost, he took the blame, and then he let Chris and Shaq and everybody do their thing. And that, mm. to me, that's that was my mindset. I want to go somewhere for a year, do my thing, hope, hopefully, try to win a national championship and be done. And he did that. And so that, that's why I choose LSU, and it was close to home. Mom could see me play all the time, and th mm. it was that simple. Everybody, you know, the bag and all that stuff. And yeah. I was trying to go get my own bag. I could care less about that right i had a utopia amateur career so Yo. i can only think that it's gonna he's gonna go keep that way keep going down the same there direction go. and then i'm putting alan iverson and stefan marbury to sleep at the abc camp run by sonny vaccaro in ypsilanti michigan those are one of those places like you know where you were when jfk got shot and Martin luther king got shot and malcolm x assassinated mm -hmm. i remember like it was yesterday and um at night we put them to sleep, and we go play in front of the NBA scouts. And it was Scotty Thurman there, a bunch of the UCLA guys, Ed O'Bannon, everybody. And 
I mean, I did something that I probably did a hundred times. I was guarding his game point. I knew the cat was left. I said, I know he's going to go left. So when he go left, I'm going to cut him off, try to strip the ball and contest it. Well, he took hard middle, went, went left. I was probably, probably a half a second late, but I still got there and cut him off. But when I cut him off, I planted this knee and it buckled. Right? Now the crazy thing about that, I finished the game. That's just how we grew up in the Calio. But I had tore my ACL at that point. You knew Did. something was wrong? Nope. I finished the game. Hmm. I knew something was wrong when I went back to the dorm room in Ypsilanti, slept with a bag of ice on it, and that jank was still warm when I woke up. So if you sleep with ice on it and he's still warm, you know something, something wrong. Something right? something wrong. Something but, wrong. But you would never think ACL. I didn't know what an ACL was. Like at the I time, said, it, was, it wasn't publicized. That was the early 90s. Yeah. Like that. You know, you they mentioned it, but it wasn't like it is today. Until it's like getting that new car and then everybody has it on the road. Once I had the surgery, then I seen so many people have ACL. Yeah. It was crazy. And so, yeah, I came. I flew back. Sonny Vaccaro came in the doctor's office with me. They said, you got a sprained knee. That's what they said. The doctor's up there said, you got a sprained knee. Sonny was so shook and scared, and we still friends to this day. He said, man, I'm calling Coach Brown now. We getting you out of here today. I left. I flew back to Kenner. I'll never forget. It's a Newman kid that I played with, uh, Dr. Memlis, bless his heart. He took me in the room, and we I, I was at his house every day in high school. Getting a second did, opinion. Yep. He did the knee test. He walked out of the room, started crying. He didn't even tell me. He started crying. So then I was like, shit, what's, going, what's happening? And then he came okay. back in and he said, man, I think you tore your ACL. And then next thing you know, called Coach Brown. He tell him. Two days later, I'm off to Birmingham to see Dr. Andrews. And, you know, the crazy thing about that, if you think Adrian Peterson came back fast and good, man, in four months, I was practicing with the team again. Back four then? Months. Back then. Back then. I was practicing with the team again, but it wasn't quite right, right? So my leg, after surgery, quads were strong, everything was good, hamstrings, calves, everything was strong, but I couldn't straighten my leg all the way out. It wouldn't get back to zero cent whatever right. flexion was good but i couldn't get back to zero so it caused like a little slight limp right and so at that point i'm practicing with the team killing too and i was just four months past and they were like eh, got a little limp man let's just red shirt so we made a good decision red shirt i would say by december that year so that happened fourth of july i'll mm -hmm. never forget it happened fourth of july mm -hmm. by december we went to hawaii i was jumping as high as I was jumping in high school, everything. And then it was crazy, man. I went to run on the beach. And, man, I was running some sprints. And, man, I thought somebody shot me. That's how loud the sound was. I don't know if it was my quad or hamstring. I can't remember. It probably tore, popped, whatever. I just felt it, right? And so then it slowed me down a little bit. But I got back to 100%. But I was like... I was moving fast. Like, so it, it kind of, Lord, good Lord, slow you down. Slow down. Right. Man, right. And so mm -hmm. slow down. And then the next year I came back, get to play with my homeboy, Ronnie Henderson. Only thing I'll give you that I remember this about, this was my freshman year at LSU. Crazy. You know how we are from New Orleans. We played Kentucky on national TV. Mm -hmm. I'm here for Mardi Gras, the game on Mardi Gras. I'm at all the Mardi Gras parades. I don't know how I get back for the game because the traffic was crazy thick. Get, I wasn't playing, though, so I was hurt. So it was all right. I'd just show oh, up. I'd be on the bench, right, right? Right. But I get on the bench. Man, that was the highest of highs. That was the game they were up 36 and lost mm. in the second half. Like, can you imagine being at Mardi Gras? You hype. You get to that game. We up 36 against Kentucky on ESPN and then lose. And lose? Oh, man. That, and who was all on that LSU team? Ronnie Henderson, Clarence, Jamie Brandon. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, they, they, Lanier Burns. Like, they, it was up 36 in the second half. Damn. That's a lot. That's when they were shooting all them threes. That's a lot to lose in the college <laughs> basketball game. In a half. In a half. Woo! That hurts. So I went from and low. But then the next year, I think I got back to pretty good. Man, I was good. I was cruising. And everything that I'd always dreamed of was right in front of me. I think at the one point in like 12 games that next redshirt year, I was averaging like 16 and 14 assists in college. And assists in college are hard. So game changed a little bit from scoring. I still scored, but I was happy to get everybody involved because mm -hmm. I knew that was the only way we could win, right, is to mm -hmm. get the other guys mm -hmm. to score. Ronnie was a scorer. He was an NBA caliber player. 
We didn't have the bigs. So when Shaq was there, they have no guards. When I get there, we didn't really have bigs, but they were serviceable. Clarence Caesar was on the team. We we we, we had a good team. We five and zero in the SEC. I'm Player of the Week two straight weeks. I'm cruising. I guess it's going great. Childhood friend, former teammate in the Boston Shootout. We're going to Arkansas. They had just won national championship. The Ola Richardson. So yeah. we're going to 40 minutes of hell. We're going into that no oh, pig suit. Mm -hmm. Loud in Barn Hill. That's when they were playing at Barn Hill. And um, big game. But I'll take you back. In the five games leading up to that, I was player of the week twice. We 5-0 in the SEC. We played UCLA, who was a national championship, mm -hmm. too, on ESPN. I came down here to speak at a school. I go back. I was great friends with Dr. Andrew's son, Archie. He let me use his 300Z. I go do my appearance. <laughs> I'm telling you everything. I go do my appearance. I read. I come back across the Bonnet Spillway. It's raining. Man, that was the first time that God just flashed me, man. I, I skidded. The back end of them things was like I hit this side and that side. Got in an accident. Right before the UCLA game, the day before the game. Damn. Um, all I remember is my head just went up the top of it against that thing and it didn't move. I remember I had a scratch. And um, we played UCLA the next day. It was normal. I was good. And it probably was the adrenaline, the scared of it, whatever. We play them the next day and warm up line. You know, I'm trying to show out. It's on ESPN. Mm -hmm. I go up, jump as high as I can, try to drop that thing in. <laughs> and when I came back, I felt something. Right? And, um, I played the game, we lost, but I limped like bad. Like never, the other limps before, it was not like that. It was a bad, it's bad a limp. Um, we lost right after the game. I'll never forget, we go in, I take an x-ray of my knee, and I had like a little, they call it a micro fracture in my kneecap. Small, it was real small. You could barely see it, but it was there. So i never forget, Dr. A came in, he was like, look, it's nothing we can do. It's bone on bone. It's going to heal or it's going to go all the way across. So at that point, it, I'm thinking, okay. Now, I had a high pain tolerance. Mm -hmm. So I was like, mm. and he was like, well, you just play. You can play as pain, how how you can tolerate it, or we can shut it down. Now, I'm averaging 16 and 14. So I'm, yeah. my dream, I'm a, I got to go. And I, I got to go, yeah. Yeah, you got to go and – we 5-0 in the SEC. We beat Mississippi State at Mississippi State. We beat Auburn. We beat Alabama at Alabama with McDice. They had mm. the best front line. Antonio and McDice. McDice, yeah. Caffey. They uh, had everybody. They had a, uh, Roy Rogers. They had a – we beat them. Hey, I ain't hear about Roy Roberts yeah. in a long yeah. time. <laughs> Killed, right? And so, you know, I, I I didn't practice. This was like now they do in the NFL or NBA. You don't play – you're playing the game, but you're in practice. You're saving so I would not practice, but then I play in the game. And I got by, and then we go to Arkansas, national TV, and fractured the patella. It went all the way. I'll never forget, somebody threw somebody a pass, they turned it over, and they threw the ball over, and I'm chasing. I know Corey Beck tried to jump back and get the foul, mm -hmm. and I, I try to catch myself and swipe after that. I don't know. And I never saw the film again, ever. And then half, I went down. They pulled the knee sleeve down, man. I had a hole in the middle of my kneecap. Half kneecap up here, half was down there. So, at that point, I didn't know what was happening because it tore so bad. It was just all the feeling. I didn't even feel nothing. And um, what, your, what was your mental? mental? I'm about to say, what your I'm mind is that with all this? Nah, this the God, craziest damn, thing. your mind is that with all this? No, nah, it's the craziest thing. If I'm thing. thinking like, man, like, hold on. It's a lot. It's a lot. This no, God, a lot to take this, it in. But this is how God works, right? So, so Dr. Andrew's watching the game on national TV. It's my mom home game. She damn near her first road game. She damn near bench. The bench here, she damn near right there. She was at the game, right? And so she came over with the trainer. She sat there. They pulled it. They saw it. You know, I think at that point, like I said, up until that, everything in front. My dream, everything. I'm like, whatever. Right. And then at that point, I questioned it. I was like, shit, is this going to happen? Like, Because I, I, I ain't know. Right? And so, like, you know, the way we grew up in New Orleans, we tough. We're just going to take it and move forward. Yeah, we got resilient. Work. Resilient. 6 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock at night, shit, 10, 12 day, years. I know. So, I'm a, you know, I can I can get over this. So, Dr. A sent the plane. 
I go to Birmingham, have surgery the next day. I ain't even had that much swelling. I had surgery the next day because usually on that stuff, they wait till the swelling goes. Right. That, man, I had surgery the next day. And, um, yeah, I question it. And, man, the good Lord has a way to, like, put things in perspective. You know, you're down. You're not knowing what's going to happen. Have surgery. You go down and rehab the next day. Man, I go down. I'm laying on the bed. You know, you're feeling sorry for yourself. Um, Bob Pettit had just had knee replacement. He was over on this side. I'll never forget. Talk. And then they bought someone that had one limp next to me. Mm. So that put things in perspective very quickly, it right? Worse. It could be worse. And that's and that's when and that's why I'm saying God works in mysterious way. My mom was with me. She sat by me. She said, Look, my son, if God didn't want you to play again, this would be permanent. It would be truly over. Got a great doctor. He put you back together. Let's just take our time and see what happens after that. And that moms have a way of, you know, they have yes. their way of saying their words. So yeah. that that was that. But then when I looked to my right and I saw the guy, the kid, it was a kid, probably about 20, but one limb left. You know, you kind of yeah. put stuff in perspective. perspective. This ain't that bad. You know, I can get through this. Whatever it is, whatever's going to happen, you know, I can deal with this. But he, he ain't never getting no limbs back. Real. Yeah. Like, he ain't never going to be able to do some things. And so that was my mindset after that. It was tough after that. Yeah, cause at the LSU, what you go with, second round? Yeah, well, it was tough because you go back to campus. Yeah. And back then... We talk about mental health now. Right. Shit, everybody right. on campus, when you going to be back? You going to be all right? You ever going to play again? All that stuff. So you hear all that stuff. You know, I'm sure depression set in at that point. But a year passed. I had pins and wires in my knee. Got that out. That was real old school surgery. Mm -hmm. But you kind of mobilized for two, three months. So you atrophy. And so a year passed. I got better. I started playing, but I wasn't the same. It wasn't right. That's when, like, you lose some explosion. You lose some second when you lose some stuff. And so I just shut it down. I think, I think mix of pressure. Now, we were doing good. We were winning. I, you know, I'm still out there. Man, they ain't win another game in conference. That was hard to watch after I shut it down that year. And so that was the first time they had the rule. You can go in the draft and not hire an agent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I did was, I just said, hell, I'm going to just work on getting stronger. And I knew once I decided that this what I was going to go for, that I wasn't going back. Because Brown wasn't too happy about that. But at this point, you know, I figured if I got 10 years left of playing basketball or any years left, I, can, I might as well get into I'm pro, not, right? I'm get to the NBA. You had to be a little selfish right there. No question. Yeah. And that, that was a tough decision, but it was the right decision. Um, to this day, and um, because I was able to just concentrate on rehab, and I went back to Birmingham with with Dr. Andrews and a uh, great um rehab guy, and Kevin Wilk. He was the best, still the best. He's done everybody. Drew Brees showed it. They did everybody, and so I got better. Put my name in the draft, and you know, like like I said, man, I had a great support from my mom. I watched her shit work bone to the gristle. And so they were like, you ain't got to go to the combine. You can sit and, you know, you might get drafted and sit, man. I said, I'm going to go work for it. I went to the combine, man. I was probably 75%. I was killing on one leg. Come on. I swear. He'd be brown them say that do my draft thing. I got all the video film for, you know, my upcoming doc. And so I go there not knowing what's happening. And this is how I know. The draft come. I put my name in the draft. It was no coming back. And, um. The night of the draft, it goes from fun to business very quickly. Ooh. I went worked out in Denver. They had three draft picks in the later round, 20, 23, 29. They said, we're going to take you with one of them and let you rehab and get better. So I'm like, okay, I'm good, right? So yeah. I'm still dreaming front. Right. Like I said, fun to business. 22 came. They picked some dude from Europe. The next pick came. They traded it. The next pick came. They drafted somebody else. I was like, Oh, you don't know where you're going to go. Man, you don't know nothing. And um, bless his heart, man. I was talking to Steve Franchise today. We were talking about the great scout for the Rockets, uh, BJ. Um, he uh, told them to draft me with the 42nd pick. They drafted Othello first at like 32. Othello Harrington from George. First pick in the second round. And then I was the 42nd pick. And then they had one more pick. It was Terrell Bell, like 52. And so... I'll never forget that day, man. I'm sitting in a hotel with my family. I get that call from Rudy T and Carol Dawson, and they were like. Yeah. And this was in the, the years when the Rockets was coming off the back-to-back. -back. 
Yeah. Yeah, I'm back uh, to the championships. Yeah. Finals appearances and winning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and here's the thing. This is how God works in mysterious ways. Now, I know I'm getting better. You know, I get drafted. I got the craziest stories in the world. I wish we had hours. <laughs> I get drafted. Best day of my life. All of the right. hard work pay off. All the doubt people had. You get away from it. You live out your dream. Get drafted. Go to the press conference the next day. Nice. Rudy and them was like, you know, you're all diamond in the rough. Cool. Well, the GM wasn't Carol Dawson. It was Bob Weinauer. I'll never forget. So the day after draft, press conference over with. Go back to the hotel. He said, come down. We're going to have dinner. So I went have dinner. with. It was just me and the GM. He was like, look, we, own, we drafted you, but we're going to stash you in Europe for a year. All right, so you got your dream, you high, and then when he said that, it was just like hey, it back in the G, high, right? Hey, back in the day, you used to have NBA Europe. Yep, you, you stayed to send players over there. Yep, <laughs> that, he, said, about this. he said yeah. we're gonna stash you for a year, and then it's we'll before the G League and all that other stuff. You used to have NBA Europe. We'll yep. bring you back, so I go from high to low. I'm like, what the hell is Europe? I don't know nothing about that. Whatever, whatever. So okay, lead night go morning. Bob Wan Howard gets fired. <laughs> Rudy them bring me into the office. That's how professional sports is. That's when from fun to business. They bring you off. They say, Rain, look, you are a diamond in the rough. We don't care if you sit out the whole year. We're going to make sure you're good, and then we'll bring you back. But you're going to be here for a year no matter what. You ain't got to worry about going to summer league. You can stay here and rehab more. We don't care about none of that stuff. Now, in my head, I'm about 90 at this point. 90%? 90%. So I'm like, shit, by the time training camp starts, be a dog out there. It's the first year, first time I'm like all the way good, everything good. Man, when I tell you, like, that was the most incredible thing, I go to training camp. After that, they talked to me, they traded for Charles Barkley, San Cassell, Robert Ory, all those guys. They have no point guard. Kenny Smith, they gone. So I hear shit, this is Tuning, I'm about to shine, right? Mm-hmm. They signed Brent Price to 18 million, and then they signed two other G League guys or D League guys at the time, or CBA guys, Emmanuel Davis and Matt Maloney. Mm-hmm. I remember Matt me, Maloney. Right? So I'm like, shit, they don't know. Hell with the whole year. I'm ready at training camp. Right, man, I go in training camp. Kill. They were like, dream them was like, man, we finally got a point guard that'll make it easier for us. I was fast, I was athletic, I was good. So your explosion came back. Yeah, it was yeah. good because I had time. I was like a year and a half. I was, no. I was still young. I no. was 20 at that point. So I go into training camp. I win the starting point guard job. Mm-hmm. Guess where the first game is in my pro career? Denver. Super dumb. Oh. Against Avery Johnson, childhood hero. So we mm-hmm. come down and do press conference. Charles uh, Hakeem didn't come. I came down, dude. Avery came down to do the press right. conference for the game to try to sell tickets, blah, yeah. blah, blah. The Spurs. So... Do that, go back, practice. It's how crazy the world is. I go back, practice. We're in Houston, with the University of Houston practice in front of the fan, fan day. Man, we going up and down. Man, a hamstring tweet. I feel it. Like, I, and it was like, Rand, you didn't play so well. This is, I'm just saying, it's how the world works. You didn't play so well. We're going to let your tail play in New Orleans because you're going home in there. But after that, you're done for the preseason. We're saving you for the regular season. Right. Now, lo and behold, we have Charles Barkley, Kim Olajuwon, Clyde Drexler, Mario Elliott, Kevin Willis, and we had a crew. Matt Maloney gets that chance during the preseason and never relinquished it. He played that whole year. Oh. Even Brent Price got hurt. In training camp, Brent Price broke his elbow or something. Right. So I'm I'm starting, and then that happened. And then Matt, he did a good job. So you got to give right. Matt credit. I he came, was solid. Yeah, but when I came back, I just backed him up. But I never got that chance Changed to do it again. because – what I brought to the table was different than him. Oh, he shot threes, and Keem and Charles them were going to get double. Clyde them was going to get right, double. That wasn't shots. my strength at that time. But I made their job easy, fast break, pushing it. And mm-hmm. I could guard. I was big. I could post, you know. And so I backed him up. So I go from playing 32 college games in three years, and that year I played in 72 games. Two. And we made it to the conference finals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, lost to, lost the to the Jazz, and that shot still hurt. Boy, it was so loud. See, people, that was the compact center now. It's the church now. Mm-hmm. Right. But they played. We played the Jazz 
and Stockton hit that shot. Yeah, he, he, they, hit he hit the pin three. Drop. He hit the three yeah. to send it to the finals. And it was supposed That's to win. That's when he started jumping up and down. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yep. And yeah. I just posted something online. We played the Bulls that year. And Dream on Ramadan, we beat them. And Dream had no to eat, no water. Man, had 36, 15, 7 blocks. And ten assists. That would have been a match. I know not, yeah, we no, would have been. We had no, we got no disrespect to, to Utah love, Jazz. Yeah. But when Josh started that shot, that's the shot when he jumped. He, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he never saw emotion he hit it. like that. No, 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 he would just he like, hit it. Whoa, you know. Yeah, he hit but it. that Rockets team that was a better match. But, but um, Charles. I know Charles wanted to get back in because he was. You know, they lost him with the Suns. Yep. Then you had Dream. They had a stacked team. And Clyde. And Clyde. Yep. So that group, because Clyde lost him in, in Portland. Yeah. So. Imagine that that team makes the finals. That's Find a three peat. No one's three peating. Okay. They they two time the book and that yeah. matchup finally has that collision where the Bulls with Jordan now being back and the Rockets are not. They wouldn't have had no answer for Dream. There you None. go. But None. The craziest thing though. Luke Longley don't stand a shot. Shot. So if you say okay, let's put Rodman on him, then Luke was guarding Charles. That, it was it was not good. It was it was bad all the way around. <laughs> that when Charles had. Expanded his game too. Man, yeah, he started shooting. He jumped and got the he Rockets. He had threes and everything. He yeah. started shooting three with the Rockets. And Clyde and 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 Mike didn't guard each other. We put Mario on him. Jumped mm-hmm. y'all dog. Now Mike was gonna get his thirty. Yeah, yeah. But then Scotty, Clyde had him. He locked him up. Right. I mean, it was a, it was a, it was that was been like the most tailored. Yes. And I would have got Brooke like after all that happened. I had a chance to get to the finals and play against Black Mike and beat and all of that stuff. But I enjoyed my rookie year was man. it was the best. So I, you know, when you say take me back, oh man, I had a hell of a that was a hell of a story. story. Right? Yeah, that old Ben yeah. Doc is crazy. And then like the next year, I had a two year deal with the Rockets. The next year wasn't guaranteed. So go back to training camp. Same mentality, right? But now Matt, Emmanuel Davis was guaranteed. Matt got a big deal because he had a hell of a year. Brent Price was coming back. So I kind of knew the numbers were stacked against me. But, man, I went at them boys unmercifully every day in training camp. I'll never forget Eddie Johnson and um, Kevin Willis was like, young fella, you made it hard on them. But, you know, they guarantee you, but that's what you're supposed to do. And, um, yeah, then the journeyman career started. That was, that was yeah, You played for, like, what, eight teams? Shit, maybe more. I probably pay eight, but I've been mean, twice with Utah and then twice in Seattle. So I think I played in the ten years after that. Man, I probably played on twelve different teams and man. went from the Supersonic days. Oh, Supersonics was good. Seattle, they definitely need a team back in Key Arena. That was a great arena. Right. Um, that's funny. My mom came up there. And she bought all her seafood, and I was like, "Man, mom, <laughs> I, right here they got all the seafood fresh you can want." She said, the water. But they ain't got no blue crab." I said, "No, they got them done in this out here. You gonna have to figure it out." But she right. bought her own crabs. But man, those were the days. I, hey. Utah was great, but my best year, to be honest with you, after that Houston year, I had another situation. Story: Phoenix years was the best year, and it almost didn't happen. I go. What I used to do is go to the CBA. Put up my numbers, get called up, make some money. Be good. Mm-hmm. I was in the CBA. We played in the finals against Aiden Griffin, who's now the new coach in Milwaukee now. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. We played them Aiden in the Jeff. finals. Mm-hmm. And um, we lost like four games to two. It was the best of seven. I was in Sioux Falls. He was in somewhere on the East Coast. It'll come to me. Now, I was MVP and we lost. In the finals, I think about Man. it. I think I was averaging something like twenty-eight and like eighteen rebounds from point guards, so killing, right? And um, wow, but it wasn't happening. But I was my own agent at the point at that time. Why is that? Because I had been through enough, and I was like, "Man, I can do this myself." Right. And so what happened was, every game I would study the box scores, mm-hmm. who needed point guards, who backup point guard wasn't doing good. I would look, somebody would get hurt, maybe it's an opportunity, and so. My CBA coach, he would call around, whatever. But it didn't happen. I just had the great series. It didn't happen. I came home. I'm like, okay, I got to go make some money. I got a call from a team in Venezuela. They were like, look, we'll come. We'll pay you 30 grand, two months. 30 grand a month, 30 grand. You get 60 grand, two months. Come play in this little league in the summer. So I was like, that's a choice. Right, and I right. call over there. 
And my boy was like, man, they give you the cash when you get here. And somebody ransacked the house. Like, I grew up in the Cali. So I called. So I called the dude back. I said, look, man, I'm going to bring my dude with me. I'm going to meet you in Miami. Bring me my paper at the airport. He'll go back that way. I'll come over and play. I said, that's the only way I'm coming. So next day, <laughs> I'm headed through there with Stan. I'll never forget. And um, like I said, I've been watching the scores. But like at this point, I'm like, I'm gone. So, you know. Now I've let the world know about my um my gambling addiction. I went to Harris. Oh. <laughs> Hold on, let me out. That's the craziest thing. I go to Harris, right? My wife at the time. I'm in Harris. You know, put the phone. I'm gambling. You ain't doing nothing. Man, she must have called me 20 times. And it's like 11, 30, 12. I'm like, man, man. I finally pick it up. She's like, man, you crazy. You crazy. No, it, wasn't, it was like 9, 10. She's like, you crazy, crazy. Danny Ainge's been calling you all day. They email, whatever. They want to bring you in for a 10-day. They got one game left. <sighs> so I jumped on the plane that night. I was going to go into Venezuela, but I wound up detouring. I went to Phoenix. And this is how people don't understand how pro career. But this, all New Orleans have, all New Orleanians have this in it. Man, I knew from the time I left the CBA, if I got another chance, man, I told myself, I'll bite somebody on my off. I'm going to make it. I'm going to stick. Right. I get to there. I learned everything in that morning and shoot around. All their plays, all that stuff. Man, that, I swear to God, they throw me in the game. And, you know, when you hungry. You hungry. And it's just like some things, when it's meant to be, it's meant like, to who be. Who was the point guard in Phoenix at the time? Was it, was it Kidd? Jason Kidd was there. Kidd? Yeah, Jason Kidd was there, but they needed a backup. They was playing Toby Biller and Alvin Sims, who went to Louisville, as the backup point guard. And Alvin wasn't a point guard. I knew that. Right. So, right. Gerald Brown was a point guard, too, but they weren't happy. You could just see the way the box scores was going. Uh-huh. Right. They were searching, right. right? And so, I get there. I learned offense that morning. We playing the Minnesota Twins, young Kevin Garnett. Late great Chris Robinson guarded him the best I ever seen. Terrell Brandon was the point guard. So it didn't matter. Yeah, Terrell Brandon. Yeah, yeah, it was a but it, Yeah, yeah. yeah man, I don't, I don't see it could have been magic that night. Man, it didn't matter who was playing across from me that night. I was going to do my thing. In 12 minutes, I had 12 points in that game and made the playoff roster off that one game. I go, we play Portland in the playoff. We lose that series, but in three games, I averaged 12 points in the playoffs against Portland. And so, bro, you that. showed a lot of resiliency. Oh, it's no question. With all yeah. the stuff that you went, oh, it's no question. God damn, those, those are some yes. funny stories, though. But I, they still didn't give him my respect. That's how, like, New Orleans guys and just back to me, that respect you got to take it. Man, I still had to earn it. Danny Ann said, "Man, we love you. Stick around here. Blah blah blah. I'm gonna I'm I'm take care of you." But they weren't gonna guarantee me, right? So, I stuck around. Austin Ainge, who I became friends with, you know, GM uh, up in Boston, now, Boston, up there. He said, Rand, just wherever we go, you go. Austin have a high school game and they play in some league, come. When they bring in the, the rookies for the workouts, for the, you come work out. But Brian Crandall, they're going to see you. I did all of that stuff, still couldn't get anything. So I stayed there. And Brian Canangelo was the GM of, of the Phoenix. Yeah, of the Suns. Suns. And he was over uh, USA Basketball. USA, huh? USA Basketball. No, that's Jerry. That's, that's Jerry. That's Jerry. Oh. That's Jerry. And that's Jerry, Jerry who came saw me when I was at Newman, right? Gotcha. So I'm in there. The powerful people. Yeah, yeah man. I, listen, Boy, I'm what? in there, right? Boy, what? I'm doing it, right? I'm killing. Couldn't get no guaranteed contract. And I was my own agent. I remember this. So this is how crazy the real is. Man, they, they wouldn't give me nothing. Bro. They were like... Come to camp next year, and after camp, if you're on the roster, we'll guarantee you. So, yeah, I ain't like that. Alvin Gentry, my CBA coach, who was in Sioux Falls, was on his staff. He said, Randy, we got a spot. Two-year deal for you. Now, I kind of, I ain't going to lie, true, own agent. I handshook with Brian because that's all I had. Right. But when he called Took that free agent visit. When I landed in Detroit, Brian Quangelo called me. What you doing? I said, what are you talking about I'm doing? I thought we had a deal. I said, what deal? Not guaranteed? I left Detroit. I had two years guaranteed. Two years. So I go back. I get back to my apartment, condo in Phoenix. That man called, cussed me out again. He's like, man, I thought we had an MF deal, blah, blah, blah. And I said, nah. Guaranteed, non-guaranteed, nah, that's that's easy, no-brainer. 
Right. He said, well, good luck in Detroit. Hung up on me. I couldn't say another word. Ding, ling, 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 ling. Danny Ainge. Ran. What would it take to stay here? I said, I need two years and a second year option, player option. I said, but I just hung up with Brian Coangelo. I don't think that's happening. He said, hold up, hold up. Don't go nowhere yet. Stay right there in the condo. I'm going to call you back. So I was like, all right. I start packing with him. Okay, go. This is crazy. Ten minutes later, how about we give you two years guarantee, man? I said, no, I need two years. I need the second year with the option. He said, all right, I'm going to call you back. God At this point, I'm like, I'm like, you know, we good, right? I'm going to Detroit. I wouldn't even worry about it. He called me back. Deal. Detroit, Phoenix, a hot weather, cold weather. Right, right, right. And I got what I wanted, right? And so. It's funny how you. And then you did it yourself. So, yeah, oh, it's no question. Well, I knew what I wanted because I know if I have a good year, any kind of way, I can then parlay that to something, right? So it's like crazy. Damn. It's the crazy business of professional sports. So. I wouldn't think this goes down like this. Oh, oh it does. Oh, it's crazy. Still to this day. Nobody was telling, it, telling you back then, like, bro, you crazy for not having an agent. No, I did, but I went from Jerome Stanley, who was Keyshawn Johnson, um, late Reggie Lewis agent. He had a couple guys. And he was good, but he was L.A. I'm in New Orleans. It didn't really work. Um, then after that, I went to – I called the Mannings. I called Archie. I was like, man, I need somebody in the South that I can do. He sent me to um, – he's a power football agent now in Memphis. You know, he's Saban's agent too. Okay. Uh, but I couldn't tell you what – he looked like he had a basketball partner who had had Scotty Pippen at the time. He said he had a bad contract. But I couldn't tell you what the guy looked like. I only talked to him on the phone. That didn't work. Mm. Then I grew up with Penum. You know, he had started the sport business. Right. Jumped on that for a little bit, but that wasn't what I needed. And so I was like, at this point, I can do it myself. At this point, I, I know do the myself. business. Yeah. And so, but when he called me back, I did it. I signed that contract. Danny Ainge loved me. Like, we have a great relationship to this day. I can call him. Whatever. So, year one of that, go into it, everything, like I said, future in front of you, good. J. Kidd gets hurt. Mm -hmm. I started the last 22 games, best year of my career. It's killing. We winning. We beat the Spurs, who was the defending champion after the lockout. After the, the lockout, round, yeah. With me starting. People don't remember that. Mm -hmm. starting, I forgot about it. We beat them. Yeah. Play against Avery again, childhood, young Sham Marion. Um, I saw Sean in his pre-draft workout. I went and worked out. I knew he was killer. So we beat him. The next series, we see Shaq. And Kobe. Play with the Lakers. And Kobe, yeah. Kobe. Now, we had Penny. But J. Kidd had got hurt. And he came back that shit. Remember, he came back with the dyed hair. Mm -hmm. He had broke his ankle yeah, came yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. So I went from starting hell. to nothing because they had bought KJ in to back me up. And they're like, we'll just go with the veteran present. That's how crazy the NBA is. But in the middle of that season, we're 24 and 6. And three of our losses was to Dallas. And they were terrible. Danny resigns. So my ace in the hole over, he resigned. Now, he put this team together. Luke Longley, Rodney Rodgers. We had a whip. Tom Gugliotta. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, Cliff, Robinson, Cliff Robinson, Rex Chapman, Jason Kidd, Penny Hardaway, Danny orchestrated all that, put that together. But that, but 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 Penny was playing more like the two at that time. Yeah, he was playing the two, no question. But what happened was, Danny saw we couldn't beat the Lakers early on, and the way the team was constructed. Team was constructed, and so his thing was, let me get out. So I don't take the blame because remember he went to TNT right after that. So did Scott Scott takes over. Yep. We become an incredible defensive team. He's one of the best coaches I had ever played for, X and O wise. He was a little loony, but he was X and O wise. He knew it. And we became a great defensive team. We go from like 25th defensive efficiency to three. And then we played the Lakers in the playoffs. Now I'm hot at this point. I felt like my time had arrived. Right. And then now Jay come back. And they're going to play him. So, okay, I can get the backup minutes. Nope, they gave it to KJ. So I end the season kind of on a side note. Me and Scott Scott never really saw eye to eye, but when I played well, he couldn't do anything mm -hmm. that little stretch. So we get to the end of the season. We got that player option, right? Mm -hmm. I exercise it because I don't know what's going to happen. Right. Get it guaranteed. 
come home, chilling, working out. Scott Scouts called me, hey, we want you to come back up here and play summer league. It's, I'm seven, eight years in now. Wow. Uh, we were trying to run you out of yeah. The- yeah. So, so here go the story. It wasn't him. I go back. They make me practice with the summer league boys, run up and down crazy. Before they're about to leave to go to Vegas, he said, nah, we don't, We just wanted to see if you were working out, if you were in shape. We don't want you to come oh. back out. A day later, ding, 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 ding. Randy comes to my office, Brian Colangelo. <laughs> um, we don't want you. <laughs> we're we going to waive you, but we won't a fourth of that money back that was guaranteed. We'll give you three fourths of it. We want a fourth. Well, you yeah, actually half first, fourth. <laughs> he said, well, You go find a trade, we'll trade you. I found three trades. No. No. So it's crazy. I used to go to the D back games. Randy Johnson, I seen him pitch a no hitter. Yeah. Tony Delk come sit by next to me. Free agents just yeah, started, yeah, right? Yeah, Tony Delk ain't never oh. signing there. So I'm listening. I say, TD, what you doing here? Oh, we got I, Rex. I, we got J-Kid. We got Penny. Me. We all guaranteed. He said, man, I just signed. I was like, oh, that ain't no good. They ain't got no room for all of us. <laughs> so the next day, they just waved me. Let the trades go by. Let free agency end in it. A month pass. They waved me. That's how dirty the business was. Now, that's when you own agent it works against you then because if you had a power they ain't gonna do nothing like that but it was almost like get back for the detroit thing right so it waved me so that year if you just look up my career that year one of the teams that was going to trade for me was golden state and this pre the splash brothers that was the worst shooting team ever four guys got paid for rebounding got paid big money because we couldn't throw it in the ocean a donald foil Dampier. Eric Dampier. Yeah, Eric Dampier did get paid. Uh, he got a big Mark, contract. Mark, contract. Hold on. Mark Jackson from Temple. He got a big contract, and one other guy got a big contract because we couldn't shoot. So they were averaging like 12 rebounds each, all of them. I remember Eric Dampier had a yeah. huge he, man, he ended up trading, getting traded to Dallas. How bad the contract yeah. was. Seattle was another team that wanted to trade. So if you go after that Phoenix year, I went to both of those places. I went to Golden State right after because they wanted to trade for me. They're like, we can trade, we can pick you up. And then Seattle the next year. And so, yeah, that's how crazy it is. Fall down, Tyrus Thomas has the big run in the NCAA tournament. Mm-hmm. Guess yep. who's coaching the Bulls? Scott Scott. Scott Scott's house. Katrina, this 2005. Katrina happened. Mm-hmm. I had a great year with Utah the year before, but they drafted Darren Williams. Chris mm-hmm. Paul, that's yep. a year. Yep. Katrina happened. 2005, yep. I asked Mehmet Okur. You got somebody, man, I want, I'm going to go play somewhere. I got to get away. I ain't going to get a contract in there. I was home. Cat from Turkey called me, 30 grand a month. I'm out. Let mom and them stay at the place. They was all messed up. I was there. I'm gone. It was it was dark every day. I had to yeah. get out of here, man. I was ready to go. So I went and did that. Oh, cool. You used to play for Utah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And his coach who coached him when he was coming up in Turkey had a team. So I went over there, did that, loved it. Great time. They stopped paying after two months. So our principal coming from the office, I'm out. Right. I left. <laughs> I stayed another month, had a little fun, came home. I flew through Detroit, watched the Super Bowl, uh, Steelers, and Seattle. Right? Watched yeah. Super Bowl, came home. Jerome Bettis' last last stretch. Yep. Uh, ben Roethlisberger. Yep. Just Crazy. Crazy. Come home, stay about a week. I was like, man, I got to get active. I can't be sitting home eating po' boy. I got to get out of here. Right. Went back to the CBA. Went there. Took me about a week to get my bearings down. Average a triple double before that week. I always knew the timing of the CBA when they looking. Average a triple double. I go in the locker room for the game. Joe Wolf was the coach. He played at North Carolina. He said, "Ran, man, I got a call from Chicago. They they gonna send somebody to come see you tomorrow. If you play well, you out of here." Man, I said, "Man, you crazy." Me and Scott Skiles hate each other. We don't like each other, but <laughs> but that's how crazy it was. Right. I had a good game. They picked me up. Really? I meet them in Indiana. I call Peyton. We talk. I play that night. I don't know none of their plays, none of that set. I'm the first dude off the bench. And Scott ran a play for me. Drew a play. We're going to throw you in the post. Ran there against, I think that Travis Best. And you should He's small. Indiana? Yep, Indiana. Yeah, Travis Best. Threw me in the best. Awesome. I think I missed a shot. It rimmed in, rimmed out. I played maybe 10 more minutes. I never played another minute in Chicago. Wow. 
This is the time they had Ben Gordon. They had Drake yes. Ben Gordon. Again. My job that year was to Kurt Holland, Ben Gordon, and Lou Alding was to mentor those guys. Mm-hmm. Right now, this how this world of sports work. I mentored him. I don't play another minute. And I'm like, Scott, what's up with this, man? I know we didn't see eye to eye in Phoenix. Like, he said, man, that wasn't me in Phoenix. That was Brian. But this, I know he messed over you on the money side. But, you know, just think about that. I was on a 10-day contract. I played that one game, never played again. I got my second 10-day contract. Hadn't played. Good mm-hmm. in practice. Good with those guys. Used to watch film with Ben mm-hmm. Gordon, Kurt, all of them. Yep. And then I got signed for the rest of the year. Yeah. So it was almost like he felt I got you. bad. And he felt I'm bad. Give your I, money I, I back you. for what, your, what, how Brian did you, right? Right. But why not just communicate and be transparent when – Coming in, like, look, I'm bringing you in, but look, don't expect to play a whole lot. I just want you to come in and mentor these guys. That 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 wasn't it. And then he told me though, like we just sat down, broke bread, we talked, and he told me, right? Now at this point, LSU gets hot. Tyrus goes on his run. Right. I know his uncles. Him Tasman, a big baby. Yeah, they, 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 they beat Duke. Garrett yeah. them, they beat Duke. I don't want to bring it up. No, nah, so they called me. So they called me <laughs> into the office. John Paxson, he was the GM. Scott and them, they were like, man, we got. A top five pick in the draft. We studying young fella. What you know about him? I tell him the relationship. Blah blah blah. At this point, I after this season, I'm like, I'm gonna just retire. They were like, man, we might have something for you, job wise. So I'm like, oh, it's gonna work out. Mm-hmm. You know, young fella, let's, we're gonna bring him in. Blah blah. I went. Well, if you go look back at all, I, I worked Tyrus out before the draft. We was in the milk house. Tom Shaw was there. He did all that stuff. I did the basketball stuff. Man. So they kind of like sent me down there to keep tabs on them. Exactly. Don't let them go, blah, 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 because they were going to draft him. Draft day trade. Portland trades. Portland trades up Lamarcus. Lamarcus Alden. Yeah, there they, you go. Because the Towers. They love the Towers. And they, traded, they made that trade deal. Well, after I draft did all that. They like, we got a job for you. And then that's when John Paxson hires his brother. Other Paxson. So then at this point, Brady come to me and like, it's just that's just the way the world works. Brady come to me. John like, Brady. Yep, mm-hmm. we got a job for you at LSU. You can come, but you don't know the I ain't had my degree yet. I went up there. I started working towards it, but I needed a year, so they couldn't pay me. I was like, man, so I said, I'll keep going playing. So that's when I went <laughs> playing some more, about two, three more years, and then I knew I was done. We played. It's how small the world is. Man, I got stories for days. We played Darvin Ham, mm, Darvin Ham, <laughs> and the Austin Toros led by Quinn Snyder. Mm. And Del two Dimps. head coaches. Del coach. Dempsey was the GM of the G League team. I was in Boise. We beat them in the best of three series. Um, and I played that last playoffs with a partially toned rotator cup. We beat them. I had a team from Spain call me and said, we'll give you 40 stacks a month to come in for the last two months. Did this and I turned that away. I turned it away because I said, I'm done. I got After this year, I'm done. You was drained. I, yeah, I was tired. Well, I was going to have no more surgery. That was the end of that. And so, uh, so I retired as a champion, walked away from it. And you got your uh, your jersey retired. Yeah, got my jersey yep. retired in Idaho. Got a ring, was MVP, the oldest MVP of the league the year before. And then we won it, and then that was it, man. And I started coaching right away. Danny came, got me a coach. You know, that's a whole different story. I was like, <laughs> don't be the head coach. And then he said, nah. Come and be the assistant coach of Austin. That's all right. I can get out the line like a little bit, go do my job. Mm-hmm. Right. But then boys was like, man, we ain't letting you get away that fast. I did a year in Portland, Maine. I just got a new team by the Celtics. And then the boys would be like, we're going to make you the head coach. So, But had I known what I would have known, I would have stayed. Because once you're part of an NBA team, it's just easier to navigate. Yeah, it's, definitely, it's, it's easier to navigate it through than just. Oh, I got some wild stories, though, yeah. Because me and Sam Presti became close. I remember I went and worked out on a visit with the San Antonio Spurs when he was assistant GM. Yeah, yeah. And I'm the leaving. The, for OKC, yeah. Oklahoma City Thunder. I'm leaving to get on the plane. Yeah, I get a call, yeah, man. Oh, he's smart, smart man. I get a call from Sam. He's like, man, I don't know how long you're going to play left, but I see you got a bright future in coaching. And let's stay in touch. Katrina happened. My mom was working for the hospital. She wasn't doing very much, but they had to stay in Katrina. So then they got shipped to San Antonio. Mm. Yeah. And at three in the morning, that man went, got my mom, put her up, and then I'll never forget him for that. And then we stayed friends. Had I known, though, this is just the trials and tribulations of coaching. Your mom. Yeah, he went, picked her up. I called him at three o'clock. My mom just landed because there ain't no way they was going when left so they land in san antonio she called me i said sam man i need a favor go pick up my mom just put up till i get her take care of her. 
did it. And um, yeah, small, long story short, Sam offered me a job <laughs> that, it's how crazy this. He brings me to Seattle. Mm-hmm. My one job was to let him know if Russell Westbrook could be a point guard. They drafted him. <laughs> so I, I watched Westbrook, KD, and they drafted Jeff Green the whole summer. Jeff Green. I was to write reports after every summer league game and give it to Sam. And, and, and I, he gave me a thing to do, and I was silly. I didn't do it. I don't know why. He said, stay close to Scott Brooks. Whatever he do, shadow him. Stay close to him because P.J. Carlissimo was the coach. Could, yeah. They moved the team from Seattle yeah, to Oklahoma to City. City. Part of the deal was they had a relocation fee they didn't do if they buy the G League team for $2.5 million, which set the mark for all the G League teams after that for $2.5 million. But he said, you can you got a chance to be the head coach for the G League team. Sam, right? I go interview for the job. I get up there after the interview. He said, we got somebody to be the head coach. We want you to be the assistant coach. So, again, you know, not knowing the game, they just wanted me to kind of ease into it for a year. Uh-huh. But then the Boise people say, we want you to be a head coach. So, I'm like, eh, but you stay on the Spurs tree, Oklahoma City tree, you yeah. good. Everybody you good. in that tree. Because that's what Darwin Alexander did. I mean, Darwin, Darwin Ham. Darwin Ham did. He stayed on the tree. So, it's important. Udoka done it. Yeah. I mean, Udoka has done it. And that's the learning thing I try to tell all young coaches in there. Did, Gr- yes. did, did Griffin? I don't think um, Griffin was down there in San Antonio at any point, huh? Man, don't, don't get me started on Griff. Griff, my dude, Griff job in Phoenix when I was playing in Phoenix mm-hmm. was the assistant video video guy, and he watched the kids in the family room when the game was going on when the wives went there. That was his job. Now think about that come up when he so, got the some, job. Something, something like Eric Foster. Yeah, well, no yes. question. That don't happen to us a lot, but it right, happened. Right, it happened. right, right. And now Griff's a great guy. I love Griff. When he got the job, I called him. I was the first guy to call him. And the head coach job for the Bucks now. Yeah. So, well, Ham, well, Agent Griffin, but David Griffin is the, 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 talking about the GM president, for the president, the president the, of the yeah. basketball for the Pels. Really? That yeah. was, that's how he started in the business. And then as he went in Cleveland with LeBron, LeBron. You know, but that's how he started. And I'm probably the only few that know that. And he knows I know we talk, you know. But he's a great guy. I love Griff. And so, like, basketball world's crazy, man. I done had a crazy journey. I've seen it all. And, like, I try to tell coaches, man, and this with me, and that's why I'm at Newman right now. The most important thing about coaching in any business, high school, whatever, which tree you get under. If you get under the right tree, you can prosper, you can move on. I didn't understand that when I was first started coaching. I understand it now. And basically, I got to a point where I had a great conversation with my older brother, and he was like, man, you be your own tree and start. Put down some roots and just start Mm -hmm. getting branches off. And I enjoy doing that. And that's why, you know, coming back, I love – I've coached college. I've done high-level grassroots, which I continue to do in the summer. But all Dante Exum, the Ben Simmons of the world, man. Mm -hmm. I had that Adidas Nation. I bought a lot of those guys over, especially Dante. Nobody don't know I was behind. And I, I thought he was going to be the man. next best thing in, in the yes, NBA, bro. Me too. Yeah, he me got too. hurt. He got hurt. He had the knee injuries. Because what? He went fourth overall or something yeah, like Dante that. Exum, Utah. Man, he went Dante Exum was supposed to be like that guy. The injuries just happened. It happened, but he's had a heck of a second run now. He went overseas. Go overseas. He's back with the Mavs now this year. So he's a great guy. And so, but I was behind all of that. I put all that stuff together. And so I've done a lot of different things. I didn't really enjoy college, to be honest with you. I, I was under Johnny. That just we went winning, and and we got fired. I moved back to Australia for six months, and then out of job. So then I was like, man, I can't do this no more. Joe Passion, they called me. Can you come to Cal? I said, no, I'm not moving to Cal Santa Barbara. I wanted to put some roots down. And so the Newman thing was weird. They asked me to come and see it from a thousand feet in the air with Coach Tillett. I went. Mm, I wasn't sure. We had a great eight grade year with Arch and Will kind of rejuvenated. Uh-huh. We was undefeated, Cannon Jefferson. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. And um, I just hated seeing my, my alma mater, you know, not being at the top of the uh-huh. basketball thing. Mm-hmm. And I, I had a plan right away, you know. And Coach Taurus would tell you this, Coach Howard. He told me about Chris Lockett. But I was coaching eight grade, so I could go watch the kids. It was not illegal, so I watched Chris. I followed him. I seen him. Mm-hmm. And that was a big like, deal when big Chris fixed his high school. Uh, when he, big, yeah. big, when he chose big. where he was going, it was such a big deal. A lot of people thought he was going to St. Yeah, yep. he changed. He changed the course of it very quickly. And then to come back the next year and get Todd Jones and Chris Lehman, and we've just been rolling. But the, 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 most, the most 
incredible thing is that we built it the right way. We got great kids that all are graduating. And um, Chris is off to Boise State, Cannon's off to North Alabama. Right. And so it'll it'll continue. We got we got a chance to be better than we have because people don't know that. And maybe I should keep that quiet. I know. Hard, I'm hard scheduled. I know. It's hard to schedule. But we got some great young talent coming up, and we'll be good. And then the most amazing thing about life, man, I get to be around my son now. He's in Newman. He's in Newman now. And he's got a chance. He's, he's, you know, we got a really good team, man. And so I'm excited about that. And, um. I don't know, whatever future lies, I'm fine. But I'm one of those guys, as y'all have heard my testimony and story, man, I roll with the flow. And, like, a lot of guys, I don't know, they can get discouraged, get aggravated, you know, and and, and kind of woe is me attitude. For me, man, everything has its time and place. I would love to be a head coach in college one day, head coach in the NBA. Whether that happens or not, we don't know. But for me, timing's everything. People, like I remember I watched the video the other day. Yeah. Obama, you know, becomes president and retires at 55 and, you know, wealthy. And it happened for them. Another person would buy. I've seen every deal. They seven, I've you know what I'm saying? They oh, you know what I'm saying? So, like, everybody has their time. And I, but time. I've, lived, I've lived that to a T. I don't worry about the past or, like, what's going to happen in the future. I live in the now. But, like. I know my time coming. You just got to – you got to stay, stay the course, course, man. You, you got to stay, stay your course. course you stay and, your course. But you also got to be willing to build and wait your turn. Right. And, and don't worry about if it doesn't happen yesterday or tomorrow, just when it happened, just knowing you prepared for it. And I think – like, I mean, I tell people, this is just my confidence. And I always had it when I played and I have it as a coach. Man, I can coach – in the NBA right now, I feel like I can beat the best of the coaches. I can coach in college. I feel like I can beat the best of those coaches as a head coach, not as an assistant. And that's how I feel. It's just a matter of time to somebody figures out that I'm an asset to a program, whether it be a local one. I'm yep. not going to say no names. But whatever that may be, that time will come. And – We'll come back and sit down, and you'll be yeah, like, man, Rand yeah, told yeah. me this first. Yeah. It was going to happen, and it will, man. So yeah. I'm just – I'm excited. This is just my time to lay some roots. I love the AAU stuff that I do, giving kids opportunity, because that's what Coach Rob and Rock and all the guys did for me. Coach Sanders, that's at 35. Mm -hmm. Those guys, even Frank Wilson, man, people don't know. Like, this just business about relationship. Frank Wilson used to chaperone us 10- and 11-year-old bitty basketball whenever we went to Morgan City, whenever we went out of town. He chaperoned <laughs> us. We, people don't know the relationships. They matter. They're important. And, like, we all here to help. Jabari, Luke, all those mm -hmm. guys I watched, you know, grow in this business. Robert Pack, you know, those those guys. It's Robert Pack now. Rob is out. He was coaching for 10, 12 years in the NBA. Mm -hmm. He's now coaching the head coach in the new league the NBA is doing in Africa. That was the last thing. That oh, yeah, yeah, so that's yeah, yeah, yeah. But he still has his program. He does stuff for the kids. But, like, Jaron Jackson, Frank Jackson still cuts my hair. Right. We're neighbors. Jaron Jackson Jr. is doing so well. So New Orleans has had, man, and Louisiana has had its share of basketball players. People have no idea, you know, from Darlin Alexander, now Mitchell. You know, th mm -hmm. there's been a lot of players come from here. Um, and I'm just happy to be a part of it. I know, like I said earlier, I'm going to put my prep career against everybody, amateur career against anybody. And um, I love doing what I'm doing now, helping young men reach their potential. And just, you know, giving them opportunities, which a lot of the kids don't get that. Either. Right. No, it's don't. scary. But we love it, though, man. I love doing what I'm doing. And um, and I've got some coaches on my bench now that will be head coaches in the future, in the next year or two, whether it's high school or getting on a college I staff. See. That's what it's about, man. It's elevating everybody around you. Yeah. Well, that tree, right? Growing that tree. Yeah. Growing your own tree. You how, how, how tough was it, man? You know, you had somebody like Chris Lockett, coming to your program, right? Mm -hmm. and, you know, I think back, it just show you how fast time passed. I remember going to that All-Star game at St. Yep. and watching him. I, before that, I had only seen highlights of him. Yep. First time I saw him in person. And after that game, the buzz started like, man, this kid could possibly be a potential pro. That's, mm -hmm. You know, that's what people yeah, were saying. Team, saying. People were saying, like, he could possibly be a potential pro. Mm -hmm. And I saw it in that game, right? Mm -hmm. Um, knowing that you was a highly talented kid coming out of high school and all of the 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 hype that you had around you, right? Mm -hmm. 
he had the same thing. I mean, I, yeah. wasn't he like top fifteen in the country at one time? One, he was one hundred percent basketball. One hundred percent. Um, and a lot of people say that he didn't live up to the bill. Talk about how you was able to help him and 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 groom him. You know, these four years, even though mm -hmm. you know he probably didn't sign with the North Carolinas or the or the, or the blue blood schools coming out of high school. Yep. Chris, Chris is um. I really, really enjoyed all my years with Chris. He's still a special player. He still has a chance. His future's still in front of him. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I, I realized right away, like when you're team building and I was able to see high school from a thousand feet in the air, there's not that many guys that are going to carry it by themselves. It's mm -hmm. just not like that anymore. I, right. For whatever reason, those days are long gone. What, what what's amazing about Chris is here you take a guy out of Arthur Ashe, mm -hmm. you place him in the academics bananas. He has a um the Arthur Ashe did a great job with him, but there's an exposure gap of academics when you go from Arthur Ashe to Newman. They Completely did a, different. They did a great job with him. There's a social climate with yep. Newman. Yep. Then you're playing for a coach that is a professional guy that understands it. And then you have the new world of social media pulling at these kids. kids all in, correct. Right. And so when people say Chris didn't live up to the hype, but they don't understand graduating from Newman is a feat of itself when, where we started. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you look at the makeup of our team this year and the makeup of the last four years, we had a total team. Cannon Jefferson is a good player. Definitely. Arch Manning them played on that. Will Randall them played. We had a good team. Austin Montgomery played on that team. The style of play that we play is not conducive to one guy getting 30 points. Mm -hmm. Right. And now you have to listen. And this is where my expertise coming at. To kill someone for his high school career and to over <laughs> – utilize them mm -hmm. kills them for later on i'm the one guy that understands that at the end of the day you got to continue to get better but you want to be your best when it's time to make some money mm -hmm. right and so chris could have averaged 25 26 points without a game but chris was always a team guy and so he would guard the best player he would rebound whenever we played yep. good teams i never had to worry about chris chris played his freshman year we played in the quarterfinals in Alexandria against a good Holy Menard team with Javon Ruffin. Again, so he shared. It wasn't like he was by himself. Chris had 36 in that game and carried us to the semifinals. And so I knew what Chris was capable of. There was a lot of growing and maturing that Chris needed to do, mm -hmm. which people... Especially as a freshman. Yes. And people don't understand that it took time. I had to also sit Chris his freshman year academically he wasn't working and it probably cost us his freshman year of being number one seed in the power and all that stuff mm -hmm. i set him for six weeks it wasn't a school thing it was an lhsa thing it's something that i decided to do, to do because i knew i had to catch him at that moment or it was never going to get mm -hmm. caught and he didn't understand that right hmm. and so when you when i say that to say is there was a lot of maturing that people didn't see that needed to happen with chris Chris left Newman better prepared for life. Hell with the basketball part of it, for life. And that's, I get that from Coach Rob. Like, those guys had us prepared, Big Woo, Kevin Sanders, for life. And so that was more important to me. We He delivered what he was supposed to. We should have won three in a row. We were two minutes away from winning our third one against Carlos and Dunham. Mm -hmm. And um, they just weren't quite ready. And so when people say, he didn't live up the building. We didn't have that type of team. I have a team and a system built around team, team. because I don't feel like there's going to be one guy to carry. Like I told this year's team, there's not going to be anybody averaging 20 and 30. They're all going to be around 16, 17, 18. Yeah. But we're going to have a great team. We're going to play a national schedule, and we're going to win. And so that that's just the way the program was set up. It's sort of like – and I'm not comparing them because Jordan, but – North Carolina was the worst Jordan average because it was built around team. And then he takes off. So Chris has a chance. Cannon has a chance to play as a freshman. And to be honest with you, basketball scholarships now are a lot different than they were 10 years ago, five years ago, three years ago because of NIL and because of the transfer portal. So to get a college scholarship now, 
They're hard. They're hard. So, Man. Right? And, so and you people don't understand that. Fit. So sometimes it's okay to go to a smaller school and be a free agent twice because that's what it is. Now go put in your work, do what you're supposed what to do. do. Somebody else will come find a power five school. Because mm-hmm. the goal is to, if you want to be an ultimate basketball player, the goal is to earn some money. Earn some stuff. money. So you figure that out the best way. Chris body isn't worn down. His best years ahead of him, his body will continue to mature, and he has a chance to play 20, 25 minutes as a freshman at Boise State. I don't know how many, even the McDonald's All-American guys are going to play 25 minutes in oh, college, no. and he's prepared. Talk to Coach Leon Rice. They said they're all you know, happy with where his progress is. He knows the defense. He knows offensive concepts. That's what it's about. Now, everybody else has their opinion, but – but again, the life is still ahead of him. That don't listen. The way the transfer portal works and college basketball works now, you can go ahead and put up numbers somewhere else, and you're still being recruited. It ain't like when you have to go sit out a year mm-hmm. and you know couldn't play in this conference. No, yeah. that 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 day has come and gone. So the landscape of it all is completely different yes. now. Yes, I mean he got his whole life ahead of him. Man, if you go out there and put bo- in the exposure, at one point in time, man, you had to go to a power five school to get exposure. Uh, no question, and, right? Man, it, anywhere now. Times are definitely anywhere. anywhere. And the last thing I think I'll say to this, and this is just a testament to me and I know and the school, Chris has a Newman degree. That his, a lot class, of weight. his classmates in the class of 2023, or a lot of weight. they will be something. Yes. He can always come back. No matter what happened in basketball, he can, he has a back home, he can get a – he can have a healthy life. Like, and that's – he has options. And, like, people don't understand that, and that's just – you know, something that comes with, you know, going to a school like Newman. Not that it can't happen anywhere else. Mm-hmm. I just know being now an alumni of Newman, what it means, I'm living proof of it. I understand what that means. And um, it, it, it's important. And the same thing for Cannon. Like, those those guys are special guys. Like I said, if you take Cannon and you put them on a car, you put them anywhere else, they're averaging 30 points right. in the city. It's not even close. They're averaging Facts. 30. They would do just what Cam Johnson did at Shaw. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's that's it. And, like, when we played AU and we went on EYBL, Chris Sean. So, like, that lets me know the talent is there. He will shine when it's time. When it's it's time. all about timing. And and that's important. Um, and so we're, we're excited about what we're doing at Newman. I put our program up against any program. And from the very beginning, we played everybody. It didn't matter. I mean, my first year, I thought we were still in the NBA. We played nine games in two weeks. Like, we were playing <laughs> four and five nights, right, against Carver, against whoever. I mean, the first year, we were like three and five to start the season. But I had a plan going into Newman, what I wanted the program to look like. and That's on the right track. And it's okay to take your lumps in the beginning to learn how you want the program to grow and what you need to do to move Hello. forward. And so – and now you got your son coming up. Yeah, son so, coming you know, up. Talk, talk about that, man. Like, and and give me a little advice, man, because I'm 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 the head coach at a middle school in my area, man, and my son is on the team, and uh, I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna wear those different hats. Yeah, it's hard for me. I, I only know one way. It's still about the program, so the team is always gonna come first. I think work is work. Like you gotta like. You got to make them work. You got to make them earn it. Mm -hmm. I have to look at the program in totality. But we still going to get our work in together with all the players and with him. And so at the end of the day, I think if you keep it in that perspective, the cream, like they say, always going to rise to the top. And I think at the end of the day, we have a chance to have a special group. Um, But we got to take care of the team. But it's a blessing now to be able to, have some level of control over his development. Mm-hmm. And right. at the end of the day, he was in Florida. He still come and play AU with us in the summer, and I don't see it. But it's not the same 12 months out of the year, seeing him every day. Yeah. You know, being able to give him. Creating them good habits. Good, good habits, habits. And the habits of just working for it. Working. Getting up at 5 in the morning, like, and Kobe says it best. You got to outwork everybody. That was like, People always ask me, how did I maintain that level of excellence all those years when I know people were coming? I just outworked people. I worked harder than anybody else. 
and I'm going to instill that in this group yeah. and him. Yeah. And and that once you do that, it's up to them after that. And he has a chance. He has some talent. The thing, thing I like about him and people don't understand, he'll have a target on his back. He doesn't know all the robberies in New Orleans yet, right? Yeah. He'll, he'll, figure, the same. Oh, yeah, he'll figure it out quick. Just the name. That's what I'm saying. And the rankings. People say, okay, he ranked. Okay, let's go after let's him. Let's go to him. But at the end of the day, for him, it's about growth and it's about continue to work and then just go out there and produce and have fun. We got great teammates. He's got, we got talent. I mean, we got like, and like people say coaching, coach, man, we got talent. And the thing I'm happy about now is that I've watched him from when I was coaching in the G League, him being in the locker room when I'm coaching Antoine Walker and all those guys, mm. and I'm about to go over the board and he's making them throw the ball back and forth with him when he was a three weeks, four weeks old. But that's how much he's been around the it's game. Better than he's better than Always been around the game. Now, the one thing he does have that I think is really, really unique is from being around the game at that such a young age, and he's very observant. So he's been watching all the Adidas Nation, all the pros, and see how they walk, how they look, how they talk. You know, he, he, he knows that language. He has language. that mannerism. He knows that language. and. Mm -hmm. And he has a high, high basketball IQ because he's been watching it for such a long time. And I think that's going to bode well for this year's team and for his future. And um, nah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. This is like, a, like, like out of all of the, the, the life lessons and all of the things that I've been able to go through and survive and move on, mm -hmm. they're like a blessing. Like, God, you know, okay. Mm -hmm. And you get to spend three years with your son now He'll go on and do what he's gonna do if God, uh, uh, season. yeah, yeah, season, and 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 that's a it's just a blessing. Like I don't like to be back at Newman, and for them to get another Randy Livingston, you know, it's like it's yeah. like uh, it's like yeah. uh, for my, I mean, I hate it's coming, but for my documentary that we're gonna do, like this is like a dream come true. This doesn't like just happen all the time, and no. I feel like all the stuff that I've gone through, it just sets the stage for this, and it's. Everything that I'm getting, like if I said I had Utopia as a high school career, it just comes full circle now. And that's everything in front of me. And so and I then, I and then it's that. it's nice because, you know, you just had Cooper, you know, the, the man has come through Newman and now and then Arch comes through Newman and he sets the stage, stage and lives up to the bill. No question. And now you came through Newman and now your son's coming. Yeah. We got four years to to watch him and 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 see him evolve. I mean, it, it's definitely gonna be fun to watch, man. I just uh, I always wonder how coaches that have their son on their team how they just you know they wear those different hats. hats, man. Like you know, once once you out of the gym, is your son still is your son taking still it personal still that you got on him ball because he ain't come over the can't hedge that screen the way he's supposed to? Like you know what I mean, like. Those is is those different dynamics that that comes into play when you're coaching your son. You but, know what I mean. But you cherish that, right? And then right. there's there's just a language that you have with your son that you know. I don't. I'm for one just because I was one of those guys who live, sleep, eat, drink basketball, right? Mm -hmm. And so as you get older, you know life is about balance, right? And so there's a time where you got to cut the switch off. Yep. Okay? We've worked. We've done you did. You had a game, good, bad, another. We're going to have another game tomorrow. So we can't live on that for every day and yeah. take it home with take you. It you got to set that that boundary, but you also got to be that. Like there's other there's more things there's to more life. There's more things to life. You got, just... you, got, you got to still do well in school. Your relationships, as they get older, they have relationships with the opposite sex. You know, I think you got to, you got to like – enjoy those times like when i'm like and that's the beauty of our relationship is all these years i have never like been one of those dads we're gonna do this do this we're gonna do this basketball 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 when he's with me we do everything else Outside of basketball. Outside of basketball. We, like, he's been we, to Australia we with me. That already. Yeah, exactly. And but so the, I know there was going to be a time. The, question, the other things are, are, are the question marks. It's not the basketball. No. The other things are the question mark because you really got to fit that in. We know we're going to fit basketball in because that's, that's what we part of. You know, that's part of what we're doing. School, yeah. basketball. It's the other stuff you really got to work at to fit in because those things are the mysteries. No those question. Are, those are things you got to really put your time and effort into because 
if you don't, they get missed. They get yeah. caught up doing something else. Well, you got to give them the tools and techniques to be successful with life. Life. Because basketball win one day. It has, you know, it's the best of us all the time. It's undefeated, no matter how you cut it. And I think it's those times you get to spend with him outside of basketball, taking trips. We've done, like, he's he's been with me with so much stuff. He knows about, you know, all of the pitfalls that I've been through. He knows about my journey. For me, as a father, like, that hat switches very quickly. As soon as we're outside of the gym, we we on to something else. I'm not, even like this summer in AAU, when the game was over with, I didn't, I, I, we haven't watched any of the games. I haven't critiqued any of that because I know it's a time and place for it. Mm. Right. I know my, my job this summer, I didn't coach AAU this summer. I was just a director. I needed to see where he was and then where we need to go. So I have a plan for that. But for it's like fatherhood, man, I think that's the, like, the blessing, man, for well, us don't. to be able to be in, be in our kids' lives and to be able to help them just be a little bit better and have a better life than we have. But I think that's the ultimate gift of fatherhood. And, you know, it, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to that just as much as the basketball part. Before we let you go. Gotta get, gotta, in. gotta get into Randy's favorites. Randy's favorites. Gotta get into Randy's okay, favorites. Let's Here do it. Go. Here we go. Let's do it. Favorite basketball player of all time. Favorite basketball. Just my style. I mean, Magic was always my dude, man. That's why people when they ask me to LeBron Jordan, but I love Michael Jordan, but I'm always closer to LeBron. But still, Mike is the goat. Right. But like that's just the style, right? It's just our preference of style. But Magic was my dude. I patterned everything around Magic. I I did. That's that was my dude. Favorite movie of all time. Who? That's a tough one. Um. Nowadays, I'm into laughing and 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 humor and comedy. But um, I, I I like To Kill a Mockingbird. To be honest with you, I read the book and then I like that story. That's a classic, right there. I, I like that Samuel. I like like that was performing. That's one that I like. But I got so many movies. Like I go back and watch that. Yeah. I haven't watched that in yeah. years. Yeah. Bro, now, now if you going? now you say TV shows, Ted Lasso was my like awesome. I love watching that. Doing all of the storm. Ted Lasso. It was on um Apple TV. It does the football coach that became a soccer coach in London. Gotcha. That's a great series. I've watched. I can watch that all day, every day. Because it's about coaching and life. It's good, though. Special. Favorite coach of all time, no matter what level? Hmm, that's hard. Um, we know it's not can Scott I get Scott. half and half? <laughs> we know it's not Scott Skiles. No, not, no Scott. not Scott. But no, it's to be honest with you, <laughs> it, it, it's Coach Rob and Coach Fitz. If I could bottle both of them up and make as one, it would be like the, the perfect coach. They were different in their own way, their own style, but they were character people first. Mm-hmm. Like they, the basketball part, they were great coaches. Coach Fitz still probably the best X and O coach I've been around in I've NBA or college. Damn. Coach Rob is one of the most incredible human beings I've ever been around in the world. And I, I, I put him up there. I have a high, high I named my son Arthur Robinson Livingston after Coach Rod. Like, he he meant a lot to a lot of us. He, he, like, people don't understand we need to have a roast. I mean, his, I know his name is on Coach, I mean, Car Court. But, like, he has influenced a lot of lives. If we go, we just got to go back. We can talk about Pat Sertan. We can talk about Frank Wilson. All of those guys he has contributed. Robert Royal. Like, all of those guys come from that tree. Noel Ellis, they come from that tree. Like, he has influenced a lot of kids, and he doesn't get the credit for it still to this day. And in the LHSA Hall of Fame, which is a whole right. story. Right. It's the great of New Orleans. He, like, is Coach Rock. He influenced those mm-hmm. guys. He asked Coach Rock, the best man that he's probably been. He will say Coach Rock. So those two guys are special. Um, And I, I mean, to me, from a coaching standpoint, for me, I take, everything my base and foundation is from those two and how i my mannerisms with the kids you can be tough but you gotta love them coach rob was loving coach fitz was tough um you gotta be demanding we gotta be at our very best that's the one thing i had a young coach hopefully he gets a job here soon high school he asked me that i think he was ready you're ready to be a coach when you're willing to sacrifice and give up all the other stuff for the 
for the beauty of those kids to be successful. You can't be out drinking. You can't be out chasing. If the next day you got to serve those kids and be your very best, how can you be your very you best? Your best? You got to be of service to those kids. And I, you know, I told him that's an area he needs to improve in, but like those guys did that. We knew what they were about. They were for the kids. They were for the betterment of the kids. Favorite sneak of all time. Oh, this might surprise you. And I told him this the other day on, um, I was an Adidas guy growing up. It's a tie between Antoine Walker. It was the aw eight. They were so soft. They fit my shoes. Great. And the forms. Adidas form. I, I love them. Adidas form. I, I love them. But Man. now today, since I'm a EYBL Nike guy, it's Nike. Right. <laughs> right. 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 Favorite place to visit? Who? That's a tough one. Um, You'd have been all over. You've been all over. Yeah, I have. Yeah, You've been I, all over. I think um, this will surprise you. I love everywhere I've been in Southeast Asia, from Vietnam, Malaysia, Singapore. Um, I heard Singapore is nice. They're, they're all in nice. Singapore is probably one of the cleanest nations. Yeah, in the I, world. I've heard that from a number of people. Yeah, but I love Vietnam because the food was as close to New Orleans as possible. Really, I've never had French bread like New Orleans, and is that Dang, the French influence? With the French influence, they had the, that, that culture. So the bread's the exact same. I would have never thought you that. Go all the way over the world, and the French bread in Vietnam is the same as it is here. And that that messed my head up. But the spices are good. Malaysia too. All those little countries in there are very. They got. They cook. The food's good. Hmm. And 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 once it takes a while to get there and make it expensive, but everything's cheap when you get there. Those, I, those are good I, I, spots. Just halfway across the world. Yeah. Good yeah. spots. Favorite yeah. music artist of all time. Shoot, that's tough. Obviously, I'm gonna stay in the city. Right. I mean, gotta pay homage. Yeah, I mean, I grew up with the No Limit guys. I grew up with the Cash Money guys. I'm, I'm, bro, I, I'm rolling with those crews, you did. Any crews across the world. I can't, I can't even say who's better, who works, because I've ran with both of them. I, I know most of those guys, but like they both have their mixtures. They both have their mixtures. I mean, Wayne obviously probably is the best to come from here. Yes, I love Juve. I love BG. I love Mystical. Yeah, you know, I saying. love I love Fiend. You know, all those guys. Are all that incredible. stuff they was rapping about. Yeah. You know what? Oh, it's no crazy. But I used to be on tour. Not, I've been on tour it, with both of them. I mean, so I, now I've seen it. out, so you, yeah. you, you, oh, you yeah. did to get credit to Mac. Man, I mean, those guys were amazing. Like those, I mean. Just leave, like out, I just leave, just leave out Silk. Um, <laughs> silk wasn't your guy, but Silk Sun is cold right now. I heard. Yeah, I heard. Almost Adam. I heard. Too. Yes. I heard. Silk Sun's good. Yeah. Peace, Mercy's good, too. We're trying to get a game with Notre Dame and brining them this year. So, yeah, those guys, those are my guys, man. I, yeah. I can listen to that. And even my guys, the younger guys, generation now on my team, they tease me about that. They tease me about my relationship with Pete. And um, because then they don't listen to none of that. They say, oh, that's garbage. No, no, yeah. That, 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 that to them is garbage. Whole Even Wayne week. is garbage to them now. So oh, all they, all they, the stuff they listen they to, chirp. the most crazy they stuff. Chirp. But they chirp. that's the younger generation. Favorite comedian all time? Oh, I'm a Chappelle guy. That's my dude. He might not be the favorite all time, but I can I can rock. Because the thing is, he's funny, but he's socially conscious. And, like, yeah. his messages are powerful and strong. They definitely be powerful. They definitely be powerful I, and strong. A lot of stuff he didn't say in his stand-ups, I didn't have to go back and research and be like, damn, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. But, and he he did it in a funny way, though. Yeah, he did. he yeah. does it in a funny way, but now he's at a place where he knows he's in power. Not, no. like, in a negative form. No, no, no. He's he good. just has the clearance. Like, some people have to, you know, censor what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Just to meet the audience and the masses, right? He's at a place where, man, I got clearance. Yeah. Y'all, y'all understand this clearance? Oh, I'm about to express myself. Yeah. And it's, it's not about it's nothing you can do. It's about accept. Not everybody's gonna have that clearance as a comedian or whatever journey they in, right? Whatever mm -hmm. field they in. Like Nick yep. Saban probably could come out right now and say something because he's at a place of clearance. Yeah, no question. You know what I mean? Same thing with uh Coach K at one point in time when he was coaching. He has a certain level of clearance. Yeah. As a comedian, I think he's at that level. But he has the clearance to come out and just say yeah, it. whatever. I have no question. And you'd be like, did he just say that? Did he just say yeah. that? Yeah, no question. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, what are we gonna do? Boy, you know who you know who just said that? Yeah. Everybody can't yeah. pull us off. Yeah. So he's at that place and in, in that's what I love about his comedy. Mm -hmm. It can come off in a way you'd be like, Yeah. 
but but I, but I you you call it clearance. I I feel like he is so entwined with the culture. Yes. Whether it's the music culture, whether it's other comedians and people, like I think from that standpoint, I mean, he's untouchable. He's That's untouchable. The, he, he can say what he wants and get away with some of the craziest like, stuff. Bingo, Talk about that. Bingo, like so many conversations that yeah. you probably want to have, yeah. and you'd be like, "Thought oh, he really, he really, he really on the tight rope." But it's funny. He be making you want to laugh, laugh, laugh. You'd be like, oh, "I know he riding the fine rope." But you can go back and watch the Chappelle shows in it and still get the same kick out of the same yeah, jokes. Yeah, it's the craziest yeah. thing. So no, nah, he's good. That's my that's my comedian. Yeah. Last but not least, toughest player you ever went against. Uh oh. Oh, let's see. I'm gonna go levels, right? Okay. High school was a tie between he was a tough defender, Pointer Williams and Jock Vaughn. Pointer Williams. Them two. Jock's probably the only guy that, no, I take that, yeah, in high school, stole the Jock ball. The stole the ball from me. Mm-hmm. Stole the ball from me. Yes. He got one steal from me. I was careless one time. I was playing on maybe a McDonald's game somewhere. But he got me. But there's very few that stole the ball from me. I had that thing on the string. College. Man, I, I give a shout out my guy, uh, no, I must AI. AI. Mm. I, I give AI. I played against AI when he was younger. But you always tell he was a dog. And a lot of that came from football. People don't understand how valuable mm-hmm. football is to that. He's just tough as nails. Bub- Bubba Chuck, man. Chuck, tough. And in the NBA, Lindsey Hunter, Mookie Blaylock. Lindsey Hunter, defensive Not, level. Yes, but was... Mookie Blaylock took the ball from me one time, and I didn't even know he took it. That's how cool we got me. <laughs> Mookie. I, drove, I, I was dribbling. <laughs> And when I did a spin move, he took it like this and was landing up on the other end. I'm still turning like I had that yeah. joint. As he got me cold, he was he was tough on ball. But Lindsey Hunter on ball defense. Yeah, Lindsey Hunter still in Mississippi Valley. No, I don't think so. Gone. Yeah, he gone. Okay, Lindsey Hunter. No, no, but he was a hell of a foot. Ninety four feet. I think Big it might have been Carmelo Anthony. Might have been Carmelo or Trace McGrady. It was it was one of the high level scores that, that played in the NBA. Mm-hmm. They said Lindsey Hunter was the toughest defender they ever went against. Listen. Kobe said Eric Snow was. Yeah. But when they said Lindsey Hunter, you got to remember, when the Lakers was going through that championship run, mm-hmm. bro, they used to put Lindsey Hunter in to pick up people 94 feet and wear him down. And wear him down. And wear yeah. him down. And wear him like down. Chauncey was starting, but he was behind Chauncey. Man, he had he, long. His long arms. I'm good. talking about with the Lakers. Yeah, he was on the Lakers, Lakers too. Oh, okay. on the Lakers, when, yeah. when Kobe and Shaq was going through that run, yeah, yeah. He Lindsay back. would come to get. I'm talking about he wouldn't shoot a shot. Yeah, he would just come in and pick you up 94 feet and wear your point guard down, bro. That was a part of their scheme. Not, not think about that. In college, he was a scorer. Right, he was getting buckets. Right. right, but that's how people change. Patrick that's how people change. Same thing. Patrick Beverly was Patrick a Beverly averaged 30 in high school, averaged 24 a game in Arkansas. Yes, got to the league, had yeah, to change his game. Yeah. Tony Allen too. All Tony stuff. Allen, yeah, when he was at Oklahoma State. Tough, but they tough. The one thing about them, they tough. And they got those attributes. Them long arms, they can control you dribbling mm-hmm. the ball. You weren't going bombs. Great feet. It was tough. Yeah, yeah. Tough, tough, tough. Man, I appreciate you coming on this podcast. Oh, man. man. Shit, oh. anytime, man. Stop, man. Chop it up. Man, you got some stories. Yeah. Oh, I got I got a million more playing with Charles and Ch- Charles and, and Jordan all meeting up when we go to L.A. Man, I got stories for days, man. Yeah. I, I had a, like, people, that's people always like, man, would you, you have any regrets? Ah, yeah, you didn't get hurt. I get that. But, like, for us, like, life and what I've been able to experience, what I've been able to overcome, and, and what I'm doing now, like, I think that's, that's super important. I still help a lot of kids. And then, you know, for me to come out, and Mark Spears, who's from New Orleans, who just got inducted to the Hall of Fame, mm-hmm. you know, he did a story on me from Anscape, and, you know, I detailed my, you know, battles and addictions with gambling. And, like, I help people now. I help people. That's like my – like, people ask me – basketball was good, and we talked. We had a good time talking about the past, but, like, my legacy now is how I'm helping people, people in the community, you know, overcome some things. How I'm getting some of these companies that spend all of this money to give resources back to problem gambling, giving resources back to, you know, being able to help people get over stuff that the normal Joe Blow don't understand. There's a lot of people committing suicide and dying over addictions. Addictions. And so, addictions. like, I think for me – that's what I want my legacy to be. And 
you know, the, the sports stuff was fun, the plan and the career and the stories is great. I can live through, you know, coaching these young men and my son now. But at the end of the day, man, it's about leaving a legacy for people to understand that it isn't about me. It's about helping everybody else achieve what they have to achieve and then helping the community, helping people get over stuff that, quite frankly, man, it's tough because it's everywhere now. You, you can't turn on the TV without, you know, no. see the ESPN just $2 billion deal with a company just to promote gambling, getting the gambling out. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's some stuff we'll talk about it another yeah, time. Yeah. But, yeah. It's, it's it, but it, you know, but that's what it's I'm about right now, though, man. That's what I'm about right now. Yeah. We didn't have part one, two, and three, and four tonight. <laughs> so we good, man. I enjoy my time, man. Except, man, if y'all need people to come on by football, man, I love prep sport. I go to the games. I go watch Tarzan and practice because I'm always learning. And I yeah. want to see yeah. the best do it. And that, um, I think I was the first one to see the little the little documentary. That hey, Al Gilles. Al Gilles. Al Gilles. Al Gilles. Al Gilles. Amazing documentary. When my doc come out, I'm going to tell you. It's coming. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. I can't wait to watch so it, man. I can't wait to watch it. Man. I know a lot of people from my area, man. Like I say, I'm from Homer and uh, – uh, I know they're going to thoroughly enjoy this episode. I know Andre Brown going to be tuned in. And, yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, and his family and, and be able to reflect back on, you know, on those days, bro, in the, in the 90s where, you know, y'all was the cream of the crop. crop. You know what I mean? Uh, so we definitely got to get you back on the near future, man. Can't wait to see what that Newman team going to look like. Y'all loaded. Yep. Um, That next era of Newman yep. basketball is, 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 is upon us, man. So I, I can't wait to see y'all, um, you know, that. thriving at National State. That repeat, that Wayne. <laughs> uh -oh. I like that. I like yeah, that. yeah. Three P. Yeah, I like that. But everybody don't notice. But everybody don't notice. Yeah, no, no yeah. question. And I, I try to be quiet about it, but it's the cat out of the bag, man. Yeah. We 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 got we it's, built a great program, and it's it's okay. Like you gotta when you build I something good, it. yeah, you gotta embrace it. And you know, at the end of the day, you know these kids have something. When you win a state championship, people can never take that away from That's you. That's it. So, yep. Y'all already know what it is, man. Listen, it's FanView Podcast. Listen, get subscribed, get liked, then like, share, comment, tell a friend, share with a friend. Y'all already know what it is. It's FanView Podcast. And give a big shout out to New Orleans Talk Network, man. Listen, if y'all looking trying to feature the next podcast, don't get to subscribe to New Orleans Talk Network .com. We There's an app with New Orleans Talk Network. If you're trying to listen to other podcasts and other shows that this wonderful network is filming for us, we deeply, deeply appreciate it. Don't forget to, again, follow G Sports. I can't help you if you need to rock. We all on social media now, baby. Got to get looked like thing with G Sports. If you're on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, if you're on Twitter. Again, it's Fan View Pop. You everywhere. You, you ain't ever, never there. You ain't never. Why would I ever kill? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Y'all already know what it is. Listen, we signing out, we man. Signing out. Fan View Podcast. We signing out. Appreciate it. Get locked in. Get subscribed. Till next time. Step Construction is here for you with a brand new offer. We now provide affordable storage sheds. Stop wasting your money on overpriced storage units and portable containers. Step Construction can provide you with a custom shed that will fit your budget and storage needs. So contact Step Construction today at 504-340-5809 for your own personal quote. Let us help you take the next step at Step Construction. It's that boy Fred, host of FanView Podcast. Tune in to the NOTN app, weekdays, 3.30, for the FanView Podcast. Go to NewOrleansTalkNetwork.com to watch more episodes of FanView Podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and watch.